Hello and welcome to the MS Arena in Liverpool as we build up towards an epic clash between Jack Cattrall and boxing legend Jorge Linares. Four fantastic fights and before the bell tonight, Campbell Hatton looking to extend his unbeaten record against Jamie Sampson, local fighter Paddy Lacey against Owen Kirk and the impressive Muhammad Ali versus Italian Giulio Comerso. But first up is William Crawler in his second professional fight against Martin Shaw. So let's get our first fight underway and hand over to your MC for the evening, Mr. David Diamante. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, good evening and welcome to the MS Bank Arena here in Liverpool, England. We are live on the zone for a big night of world class professional boxing. We begin tonight with a full round super welterweight affair, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing, sponsored by Betfred, Stage Front, Forged Irish Stout, and Everlast. All of tonight's bouts are sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Mr. Robin Smith. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell, scoring A-star referee from Fleetwood, Mr. Steve Gray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing scheduled in the super welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black and yellow. He scaled 10 stone, 13 pounds, 14 ounces. This 23 fight veteran hails from Rotherham. Please welcome Martin, the Daddy Shaw. Shaw. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the black and orange. He scaled 10 stone, 13 pounds, two ounces. His young professional record thus far perfect. One fight, one victory. Fighting on a Manchester, England, William Krala. Krala. Okay, boys, I'm up in your waistbands. Keep your punches off the shorts, okay? Don't throw any punches on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times, okay? Touch them up. Good luck, lads. Here we go into the first contest of this evening. Super welterweight contest between William Crawler and Martin Short. Second turn, round one. And I am very pleased to say with me, as always, the wonderful Barry Jones. I pick you up too much, I think, Barry, every time I introduce you. Those little those jokes are on my height. See, big, <laughs> see, they're big straight away. I'm not paranoid about it, but yeah, no, thank you, Danny. Oh, and. Gary Cully fighting soon, November 25th. How are you doing, Gary? Oh, it's a lovely right hand. William Crawler just uh, doing introductions. Beautiful right hand. Short is all over the place. Needs to get his hands up. It's a great attack from William Crawler. Just needs to take a little bit of a, a little bit of a breath here. You now Crawler can pose himself and pick his shots. The Shaw's on the, on the ropes here. Oh, there's another left hook. Get a bit carried away with the shots, Crawler, but that was a lovely shot to stun Shaw. He's on the ropes, trying to cover up. Just needs to change the pace of the shots now. A little flurry down the middle, then, then big heavy shot. Oh, big left hook! What a victory for William Crawler! He's not even time for an introduction. <laughs> not even time for an introduction. And you can see what it means to William Crawler. Explosive start, Barry. That's a great result. Can he box well in his first fight? But you know, there was a few things you thought he needed to work on. But he hit, he hit Shaw with a big right hand and he just stunned him. He almost dropped him in there. And he, and he looked really heavy on his legs. And Crawler just a barrage of punches there. But, you know, got a little bit excited at the time. He just needed to take a breath just to compose himself. But you can understand, you know, he, he thought he had the guy over there. Put the pressure on him. Great finish. And then the referee separated him. He went back there. Again, nice and good. He's more composed. Picked the shots well. And that finishing right hand there was a cracking shot. What a shot that was. A right hand. Just a lazy jab on it from Shaw and Crawler just dipped the shoulder, dipped that right hand over the top. And from there on in, then he was just head hunting, looking for the finish. And Shaw dipping from the waist, bobbing and weaving, trying to survive. But Crawler had the bit between his teeth by, the, by that point. You'd be proud of that stoppage, wouldn't you, Gary? Yeah, for sure. Uh, started explosively, landed a good shot, and uh, got a good finish. So he'll be happy with that one. 
Yeah, it'd be happy indeed to see Brother Anthony walk over to near our commentary desk just to applaud the travelling fans. Just seeing the, the last little finish there, there was a long left hook there, like just the really thudding shot. That cut looks just cut short as he was leaning back, and the referee then enough there to go. There's a shot there, just wow. whipping the head back. The referee, Steve Gray, there, good intervention and a great, great second fight there, and a first round stoppage for William Crawler. Yeah, unbelievable stuff from William Crawler. What a start to this segment of the evening before the bell. See what it means to the young man. Referee Steve Gray has the both fighters. David Diamante has a microphone in hand, his hand over to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Gray calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, 56 seconds of round number one, declaring your winner by TKO. He's still undefeated, William Crawler. Wow, catch your breath. That was explosive in many ways, it really was. William Crawler. Two fights now as a professional. Very, very impressive stuff from the young man. Explosive, big punching. With both hands, you see the big smile. Brother Anthony just in shot as well. No smiles from him. We'll be looking to improve his brother's boxing ability, but there's a lot to work with for the team. Well supported as well, just mentioning them. As uh, we will see in the replays, great support. A lot of the fans obviously that supported Brother Anthony. I think we're going to hear from William. He walks over to the neutral corner. We'll hear from William, promoter Eddie Hearn, and our report for the evening, Jamie Ward. Well, William Crawler, what a way to open the show here in Liverpool tonight. The smile on your face says it all. Just give us your immediate reaction to what we've just seen in that first round stoppage victory. I told you I could bang, but the last fight didn't show it. I was saying it's a heavy hitter and um, I didn't hit the last one, but I just, the improvement from the last fight has been massive. I said that. That's my second fight in a few months. Last time, my second fight in a few years. And on the rant here, I'm, tra I'm training every day. I'm living the right life, and uh, that's just a start. You said headed into the debut in Manchester, by the way, that you were nervous, you felt the pressure, and it's, it's completely understandable why. Heading into this one tonight, how did the mindset compare and how did that reflect in the performance? It was just, it was just like another day at work. Like last time, I was a bit nervous of the thing, but I've got nothing to worry about. The way I train, no disrespect to finger. I'm better than these kids and I'll, keep, I'll, I'll always show this. And um, as I step up and the fighters get better, you'll see a better me, and I promise that. There's certainly a lot to work with, Will, a lot to like as well. In terms of the plan, early days, but what's in your mind of, of the next steps now? Keeping busy. I just want to stay busy, and if I'm busy, I'll progress and I'll win titles, I can promise. Let's grab a word with older brother, Anthony Crawler. Uh, Anthony, as I say there, certainly a lot to work with, a lot to be excited about as well tonight. Just give us your immediate reaction to that, because that meant a lot to Will this evening. Yeah, it meant a lot to William, it meant a lot to me. I saw how hard he's worked. Uh, since his debut, he stayed in the gym, and I knew I'd see a big performance from him tonight. He's, uh, he's probably changed his lifestyle now around, he really lives it. And uh, he's only going to get better, I promise you that. But like you say, um, activity is key now. He'll be next week, and he'll... He was joking at the press conference earlier this week that you've got more pictures hanging up in your front room of Jorge Linares than you do of him. Um, it's quite fitting, isn't it, that Will should open the show tonight and your former foe, Jorge, is the main event this evening as well. Yeah, it's true. Will, uh, he finally got on the family wall after... <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. He might listen to performances like that. He might get another spot on as well. I yeah, know it is. It's, uh, it's a very special night. We're very thankful for the opportunity from Eddie and the team. And, yeah, great night. A few rounds on the pads backstage because he's barely broken a sweat here. No, no, I'm working for his own now, so it's all about me. <laughs> Big timer. Uh, promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, we love this story. It's always great when we have stories like this, but with performances like that, perhaps it's going to be a fun one. To be honest, I said in the press conference, I want to put pressure on the fighters to deliver. That was exactly what I'm talking about because everybody watching on the stream, everybody here tonight will walk away and go, wow, that was electric from William Crawler. You know, I mean, he punches a lot harder than his brother, <laughs> that's for sure. Sure but you can, you can see he's heavy-handed and, you know, he, he, he done the signature gesture after. That's the kind of performance that's going to earn the signing. You know, it's, it's, it's great being Anthony's brother, 
But I believe he can really fight. We know he's got great support. Anthony had great support, and they'll, they'll continue to support him. But that was a performance of someone with bad intentions. We want to see that. People at home want to see that. And I know it's nice to cruise to a points victory, but if your level's above someone, go in there and destroy them and get them out of their ASAP and make people go wow. That was a wow performance from William Crawler and, and a real step in the right direction. Plenty of work to do, but you know, we'll, we'll talk on Monday. We'll get, like you said, activity is the key. We, we would always want to welcome him to the stable, but rather than do it as a favor, we do it on ability, and that's always important. That was a performance that made me go, wow, this kid's got something. Well, Eddie mentioned the support there. Final one from you. It's early doors here in Liverpool, but a good support in here for you tonight. Do you have a message you want to leave for everyone? Um, I can't thank them all enough for getting here at this time. It sounds like it's full when I was boxing then, and uh, I can't thank them enough. Without them, I couldn't box on these shows, and I owe everything to them. William Collar, what a way to open the show. Congratulations to you. you Onwards, enjoy the rest of your night, and well done. Come on, boys. Well, we uh, barely took a breath there. It's incredible stuff. Out of nowhere, a huge right hand. I know he was desperate after that first fight. There was that contentious knockdown in the third round in his debut. Um, but he just got straight down to business, Gary. Yeah, I'd barely sat down and uh, <laughs> the fight was over. So, um, yeah, big performance by him. He'd obviously said that he believes that he can punch and um, he didn't so show his first fight. Like, so when he landed that first shot, um, he wanted to get him out of there and he did, he exploded and uh, it was a good performance for him. There was a, there was a difference in when, when he first landed with the, with the first big right hand and he and he saw him hurt and he went for him and he was a little bit wild. But then when, when they separ separated them and he went in again, you could see, he just, I said he needs to take a little bit of a breath, you could see he was a little bit more composed and the finish was more accurate and more precise with that. You can see there was a four punch combination to finish it off, every shot hitting the target. So, and again, and that's a good thing for them. You know, it was a good quick finish. You think not much to really critique, but there's plenty to critique from that because are oh, you finish a guy sometimes or, or composing yourself when you've heard a guy to make sure you get that finish. It's the difference between winning a fight or that fight going later into, into, into the rounds and you may be coming on the second second best sometimes. So they'll, they'll, they'll watch that and go, you hit him with a good shot, you rushed your work a little bit, but then when you took a step back because the referee broke you, you were more composed. And because you were more composed, you were more dynamic with your work. And you feel he's dealing with the pressure as well. It's got to be hard, Gary, being Anthony Crawler, that legend from Manchester's brother. But he seemed like he's taking it in his stride. I was just going to say, he's got big boots to fill, obviously. Um, second fight being Anthony Crawler's younger brother and... Uh, He's got a lot of pressure on his shoulder, same as Campbell Hatton on the card tonight. I always respect these guys more because it's a job that, probably the hardest job that you can pick being having an older brother or a parent who's who's been there and done it. You're coming in with a lot of pressure on your shoulders and these guys who choose to go down that road have nothing but respect for them. Um, he obviously works really, really hard in the gym. He come in in fantastic shape and um, he's obviously listened to his bro as well because, uh, like I said, when he landed and he exploded on... on uh, that guy's chin there, he got him out of there straight away, so um, I'm impressed for sure. But they will have to be patient with him, Barry, wouldn't they? They will, but you know, when, when, you have, when you have a guy who can sell tickets, that's all, you know, being Anthony Crawler's brother is a fantastic story, but it all comes, the bottom line is about, is about commercial worth, and so if he has potential to go a long way, it's still a, too early to say, but if he sells a lot of tickets, he gets put the spots on bills. But having that pressure of having a famous name within the sport, it, it's hard. No, my, Tom Jones is my is my uncle. Nobody knows this. <laughs> no, and Shirley Bassey's my auntie. So, no, being from a, from a from a famous family, if you will, it was difficult for me growing up. But no, it's you I'm, dealt with it brilliantly, <laughs> Barry. I must say, brilliantly. <laughs> well, William Crawler, Crawler goes to two and zero. Tremendous victory and reminder. Jack Cattrall returns this evening. I've grown up watching the Nares, uh, I class him as a modern day legend. It's an amazing opportunity, it's an amazing fight. We could talk about all these exciting fights in the division, but they mean nothing if I don't put on a good, strong performance and beat him. Jack Cattrall is an undefeated guy. By October 21st, I don't get that On October the 21st, we're climbing through them ropes, it's game on. I know what he does, because I know what he's capable of. Jorge Linares is back! It's up to me to beat him.
Just a quick message from us here at Matram and the Zone. We had some bad news after the Sheffield show. Uh, Connor Coggill was taken to hospital a couple of days after his contest, his epic contest with, with Hopi Price. We just want to wish all our very best to Connor Coggill. We hear he's back home now, recovering and resting at home. So everyone from us at the top table here at Matram and the Zone, we wish you a speedy recovery. But tonight, starting at 7 p.m., our main card is looking like this. This is the fight week for me, all the hard work. We really do have some fantastic fights on there. Unfortunately, due to an illness, Shabazz Masu versus Jose San Martin is off. So we start the night with Khalil Majid against the experienced local fighter Tom Farrell. Akib Fiaz in a cracking contest against Reese Bellotti. He cannot wait for that one. Hard hitting Jack Turner versus Adam Yeya and the local future superstar Peter McGraw up against Fran Mendoza. And that leads us nicely to tonight's main event Jack Catchall versus, like I said at the top of the show, a boxing legend in Jorge Linares. Barry, I only feel it's right being in Liverpool that we talk about Peter McGraw. Unbelievable am amateur, turned professional, hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Future superstar? Yeah, funny you mentioned Pete, because footwork's everything. We all know this. Footwork's everything in boxing. It gives you the it gives you the you know, the purchase to throw power shots, gives you the movement you know, to, for, for defense and offense or the, the angles of attack. It's everything. He has Arguably the best feet in the country. Peter Chenko. Peter Chenko, that's right, Peter Chenko. His footwork sublime, which means that he can get in places that the boxers can't reach. <laughs> Excuse the play. And he can, he can get on angles of attack that other fighters find almost, almost impossible to get to, which gives him such an advantage with his offense, but also he's a hard target to hit because when he throws his punches and you go to throw back, He's by the side of you, or behind you, or, or, you know, or three steps away without, without seemingly making that move. So the movement with his feet is what makes him such, what made him a world-class amateur, and what makes him such a potentially world-class operator as a professional. Big fan, Gary? Probably one of my favourite fighters to watch. Um, period, in the whole world. Um, I've known P since the amateur days. We were the same way back in youth, World Youth Championships 2014, known him since then, watched him coming through the senior ranks. He's been a world-class amateur for the last number of years. Um, and I've been following his pro career closely, training the same strength gym as him. Um, I'm a massive fan. I'm a massive fan. He's super talented. He cannot be far off headlining himself in this arena. He cannot be far off that, can he, Barry? I, I, it, no. I think when you've got a talent like him, it's you know, how you promote him is very organic. No, I think you, you have, a, have a plan, but if he, if he, which he's potential to do, puts on a star-studded performance in this, in this against a hard, a hard professional like tonight, then you don't just put him the next level, you go up two, three levels. And then the problem you have there is before you know it, he is at world level. But he still has to, has to have those enough fights at home to garnish that support. As good as he is, you've got to get that support around him. And it grows quickly in, in fight cities like Liverpool. But I mean, a couple of more, and I think he will, we won't be far off, you know, if his potential goes that same vein, he won't be far off challenging for meaningful titles. He can, yeah, he cannot be far off. He can't at all. I mean, what a fighter. Like you say, defeat, everything. They're your foundation. But another local fighter is up next, Paddy Lacey. I think our MC is ready. Yes, he is. He's in the ring. Mr. David Diamante for the introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from Liverpool, England, we're set to go with the six-round super bantamweight affair. Now making his way to the ring, please welcome Julio Il Dottore Comerso. Excuse me, I thought it was Paddy Lacey out. This is definitely not Paddy Lacey's opponent. This is the unbeaten Italian Julio Comerso, born in Pescaro, Italy, now living and fighting at Madrid, Spain. He's 29 years old, and to be honest, he's a bit of an unknown quantity. In today's age, in today age of technology, you'd think you'd be able to find fights, but I struggled. I found a couple of his amateur fights, but he looks accomplished enough. Like I say, brings an unbeaten record into this fight. 
So let's see what Julio Comerso saw off of the season. And his opponent now making his way to the ring from Leicester, the young undefeated fighter, Muhammad Ali. And here is Leicester's extremely exciting young prospect, Muhammad Ali. Still feels weird saying that name. Three fights in as a professional, and all of those victories have been impressive. He beat Sean Jackson on his debut, winning comfortably over four rounds back in March. He then took on Brian Castro in London's Wembley Arena, cruising to victory once again. But it was his last contest in Birmingham this August that really got our attention when he destroyed the usually tough Francisco Rodriguez in three rounds, knocking him down with a beautiful left uppercut. The Spaniard did, however, get to his feet bravely, but it was the ruthless attack that followed that was so impressive before the towel come in and the referee waving off the fight. Fantastic start to his career so far. Let's see if Muhammad Ali can follow that up this evening. All right, ladies and gentlemen from Liverpool, England, live on the zone. We are set to go with our next contest, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stage Front, Forged Irish Stout, and Everlast. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Liverpool, scoring A-star referee, Mr. Mark Lyson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the Super Bantamweight Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black with the white and red trim. He scaled eight stone, 11 pounds, 10 ounces. His young professional record thus far perfect, Two fights, two victories. Fighting out of Madrid, España. Please welcome Julio Il Dottore Comerso. Comerso. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears white with turquoise trim. He scaled eight stone, 11 pounds, 14 ounces. His young professional record, also a perfect one. Three fights, three victories, one of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Leicester, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Muhammad Ali. Ali. Okay, boys, both your shorts a little bit higher there. Strengthen on the top there is good, okay? You both know the rules, want you to obey my commands. Tell you to break, break clean, defend yourselves at all times. Guerrero Uno, play Olympia, protect a tenant, hold the memento. Touch goes, boys. Good luck. Seconds out, round one. But it's about number two we go. Like I say, features the impressive young Muhammad Ali. So impressive last time out. Destroying Francisco Rodriguez. Barry, he's made a tremendous start to his career so far, hasn't he? Yeah, he's really good to watch. You know, he knows he's, he's a boxer, he's an out and out boxer, but he's aggressive with it, isn't he? Every, every shot he punches long as well because he's tall, but he makes use of that reach even when he's coming forward. Everything's been a long, solid, so called jab, and that just sets up all the, all the punches from it. Seems really to, to he seems to understand the new ethos that Eddie's trying to filter into his fighters. You know, it's not about winning, but about looking good and exciting, Gary. Yeah, for sure. And um, we were just talking about William Collar having big boots to fill. Well, I apologise to Anthony, but I think this guy definitely has uh, bigger <laughs> boots to fill than yeah. William does. But um, yeah, no, he's looking the part. Nice slick southpaw, tall like you said, but gets the shots off nicely. And um, he started this fight really well. Yeah, he yeah, has on the front foot. He's taking a step back now. Like I say, Commerso, kind of an unknown quantity. I did see a couple of his amateur fights, like I said, in the ring wall, but. Can't see too he, much. And he looked like this, didn't he? Yeah, he Hand, did. Hands high, come forward, but square on a little bit, straight lines, and that'll make it, if you, in this vein, with those feet not as fast as they should be, it'll make it an easier night there for, for Ali. Nice and sharp, Ali, just trying to draw out the leader, Comerso. Looking for that left hand over the top, that's the shot. He throws so well, it's the uppercut yeah, against Rodriguez, with such a 
well timed accurate yeah, shot. And that's a shot he needs here, isn't it? He needs to, look, to touch him with, the, with that southpaw jab there. Just, I like how he flicks that jab out, just judging the distance nicely, and then gets that uppercut off as well. He looks really good. And it'll encourage Commercial to come forward, and that's where he can get that uppercut in the play. Because the feet are too slow to, to take a big step to close the gap, as you've seen here. Lovely fast combinations. Nice and light on his feet there, Ali, as well. Yeah, changing the, the power in the shots, the speed, moving side to side, and has come into the pro ranks. When you've got slow, sorry, that, that, when you have slow feet, if you double jab and just try and just stab with that front foot, that'll just help you speed up and get closer to the target. And that's what Camilso needs to do here. Which commit to that double jab, whatever. They don't aim for the head, just aim for the chest, or, no, ar no, around the chest weight to length, and just double jab really fast and try to get that front first, and I'll get you close to the target. Then you can work away, then you might get some success. A little clumsy by the Italian, just loading up with the hooks and the speed of foot. Barry mentioned from Ali, just being out to avoid the shots. I was about to say, he did come into the pro ranks with a good amateur record, multi national champion. See the class, the pedigree, the focus from the young man. This is his first six rounder. This is his experience in something new. Nice left hand from Ali. Oh, and just walks the Italian onto two crisp shots. Very, really good start there from Ali. Very sharp, impressive opening round from Muhammad Ali. See him in the corner just intently listening to coach Dave Caldwell straight to the centre ring, poking out that southpaw jab, trying to draw out the lead. The Italian Comerso just so far just hasn't had the speed of hand or feet to get close. But it isn't it? It's all about tempted Comerso to just come up with that shell, tempted to get over that front foot once he's off balance. And Ali ho he owns him then. Because you got the nice wide stance, but you got the fast enough as well to move around the target, pick the shot from any angle if you like. Yeah, just it. throwing that. Picking his shot really cut. nice. He's really good, Gary. Yeah. 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 Picking his shot really nice here. It's the left uppercut say he dropped Rodriguez in that first fight and he started with a left to the body he just threw that a moment ago moving nicely on his toes again not, so quick Barry and nice to see a bit of commitment there from Camusso he didn't have much success but he's committing he committed to an attack there and that's when he, when you've got a guy who's technically better than you as he's done along this the time and the space the set of the attack you've got to rush their word you've got to smother them try and get them out of their rhythm but you've got to get close to do that yeah, signed Good match room in December. Muhammad Ali is managed by Sam Jones. Enjoy every second of it so far. See him walking around the hotel, buzzing as a spring in his step. Just can't wait to fight. He wants to be busy. Sam Jones, manager, I like to keep him busy. I think us as fans as well want to see him more regularly. He's at, you know, he's, uh, he's exciting, powerful, always listening. Boxing nicely. Oh, good shot there from Camus. Nice lovely yeah. right hand. He got a walk off that now. It's the first success he had, but it was a he took it well there, Ali, but it was a thirdly third right hand there from Camus. Yeah, just a reminder to Ali, you've got to stay switched on. Again, though, once he committed to his attack, he believed in himself for a second and, and had a bit of success. Looking for that left uppercut, just missing that time. And with the follow-up hook, that's immerse, a lovely jab that there, beautiful though, jab, sharp, accurate. He's stepping it, you got that front foot and the hand, they're moving together there. Got 
vari lot of variation with that lead hand, Gary, from Muhammad Ali. Yeah, he's flicking it out nicely. Like I said in the first round, he's uh, judging the distance really well with it. But when he lets them off like that and puts a bit of power behind him as well, you can see he's got them long levers. And when he gets when he gets uh, his opponent on the end of them long levers, he's got a bit of power behind him too. Yeah, that was nice. He planted his feet and let four or five shot combination go. Really sinking the shots into body and head. He doesn't need to be punching with commercial though. Doesn't need to do, a lot of a chance to, to, to land back. This is better though from the Italian. He's getting close. He's backing Nali into the blue corner. That's something for the Italian to, to work and build off of. He's had a go that round for sure. Really fast hands there from Ali again, punching nice and long. That's done a lot of commercial any. Any opportunity to close the gap, but then when he did get close, he was allowed there. Nice little short right hand there from Commercial and a little wave of victory with that right hand. That was the first first success he's had in the fight. Chip was a Ali, little high, wasn't it, Barry? Yeah, no, but it sort, it sort of allowed Ali then. Ali sort of like kicked the gears, that unloading punches. But with that, he just held his feet every now and again. That punch him with Commercial, and even though you know, he had a decent round again there, Ali, just allowed. I love the Italian in, and that's just a little warning sign that he has to keep that discipline when he gets caught, stick to the plan, confuse, confuse, and, and then every now and again, land the power shot in, just to draw him out of his shell, make him pull him in the front foot, and land with the quality shot without importantly getting hit yourself. Into round three we go. Can the Italian get closer? Can he try and put a dent into Ali? Let's see. Ali straight out and took the centre again. Like the first two rounds, it's nice to see. Jabbing that, that right hand jab out as well. It's a nice jab. And when he steps with it, there's a weight behind it, isn't it? Just knocks the head back there. Kind of he steps in with the free, with the lead leg as well. It's really nice. Short left up. Comerso has Ali just moved to his right. More of an arm shot, no power in it, but a little warning to Ali to tidy up defensively but looking calm you can see the focus and the concentration in his eyes Barry yeah it, it, it's, 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 he's boxing really well but it, it does amaze me when you've got a fighter who's tall for his weight oh they sometimes shorten the distance and a lot of the fighters in now and again do you know what I mean Gary I wouldn't really know <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say Barry just grabbing hold of Gary Cully there <laughs> <laughs> and they don't need to, but all the all the powers oh, at the end of the nice shot. left hand yeah, there, Barry. Some good work to the body. Yeah, and he's starting upstairs. Yeah, yeah it's a good left hand from Ali, changing the levels with the shots really, really well. Head, body, head, body, keeping the Italian thinking. The shot right took there from Ali, wasn't it? Bit of a crude roll, but the idea was right. Just to, to, to just go from one side to the other side and come back with the right hook. See, we can hear rather. The, the crowd, the fans of Ali sold a ticket, that's for sure. Yeah, got some good support here for sure. That was good from Commercial. He didn't fire off it. There was a little feint, showed a little bit of speed in that feet there. Nice little feint, but just didn't fire off it. He's just a little cautious, a little worried to take that extra step, Commercial. It just doesn't want to get too close. Just felt a couple of the shots in there, but at this range, only suits Alu lands another lovely left to the body. Beautiful shot. Yeah, like you mentioned, Barry, you can see he's trying to draw out that lead, isn't he, of Commerso Ali with that lead hand, just sort of tapping, tapping. Yeah, but changing the weight on the jab is very, you know, very intelligent work. Just means it just just makes it happier for to read your work. Then you can't have to set it up to, to anticipate what you're going to do. Moving around to his left, trying to get back to centering. That was a nice movement from Ali. He controls the distance really, really well. When he punches long, it's so much of a better fighter to watch. That loop and left hand, really nice around the side as well. Yeah. There is again. Oh, he's enjoying himself. Little yeah, step, you see again. Half and Mohamed Ali shuffle there. If you like, maybe going to try and adopt his own style to that shuffle. But it's a good work from the Italian. He's trying, but good defensive skills from Ali at the end of that third round.
Seconds out, round four. Into the fourth round we go. It's been a nice, confident display so far from Hamid Ali. The odd little bit of a success. That one again from the Italian, but it's in the superior hand speed and footwork, hasn't it, Barry? To be honest, it's, oh, I could shot there from Commercial, yeah. yeah. But it's, he's only, no, Commercial's only fitness, he's come to win, he's going to be ambitious, but he didn't have the, feet, the footwork to get close. And the only times he's had success, and he's, no, he's off his own doing, but I mean, it's, it's really been when, when Ali's either closed the distance or held his feet. That's all it is. No, I, I understand Ali, you know, he wants to, he wants to throw the shot that he's up close. He wants to get a bit more weight in his punches, so he feels that like he has to close the gap a bit more. And that's the, the sort of that educated risk you take. But I still, I always say with tall fighters, you just punch long. Tommy Hearns never punched short. Yeah, when he's relaxed, when he's keeping it long, keeping him at range, he's looking really good, and that's when he's making it look easy. Well, that, when you're relaxed, that's when the body mechanics come in. You turn from the hips and the waist. It's a whipping shot you throw. And you push up the back foot, and then all the weight comes in. When you when you tense up, it takes away all that fluidity of your work. Yeah, you can see again, superior skill set from Muhammad Ali. Natural counter punch, a nice skip to the right. A big fan of that footwork, Barry, aren't you? Oh, I'm, all, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Again, just flicking out that jab, Ali. Once again, trying to draw out the lead. You can see he wants to fire back with that left hand. He favours the uppercut. But he's showing patience there because he's, he's, he's dipping the shoulders looking for the shots and it's not quite there, so he's just taking a step back, re-engaging and going again. Again, we're just seeing the Italian just a little hesitant to, to bring his feet in. I think, like you said, Barry, just doesn't have the footwork. You see again, a little clumsy there, just falling over the front foot, throwing that right hand. Oh, it's a lovely yeah. left hook from Ali with that rear hand of his, and again, dropping down to the body. It's the variation as well that's been so impressive from the young man so far in his short career. This is how he should be boxing. I, I know there's an eager, there's a there's a pressure to impress, and I don't understand what Eddie Hearn the promoter is on about. You know, you have to stand out from the crowd, but ultimately you have to win. That's the first and foremost in everything. Just keep winning, and and boxing like this, using to his strengths here, is what he needs to be doing. This is good work. Left hook from Commerso goes in, but he slips inside the shot. Ali and looks for that left to the body. The Italian trying to follow up with a right hand and the left hook, but. It's the footwork again for Mali, just getting him out of danger. Been looking for that left to the body all night. It's it's uh, working well from when it comes off. Just slips inside that shot and throws that left hand short to the body. Just following Ali around the ring. Commerso needs to try and cut that ring off. Ali again showing how elusive he can be on the back foot. Trying to become more of a threat here, hasn't he? Commercial, but ultimately, Ali's no, no, Ali's just decided to keep that distance. It's been a, a much more controlled last couple of rounds, I, I feel. Yeah, I'm sure Ali would like this man to take more chances and fight. We've got to look forward to December 2nd, Michael Condon versus Jordan Gill. That follows your show that you're on, Gary, November 25th. How's yeah. camp going? Yeah, over in Liverpool, first camp over here, settled in. Um, loving the city, loving the gym, loving what I'm learning in my new team, and uh, I can't wait to put on a performance on November 25th. We look forward to it, Gary, as we go into the fifth round of this contest. New territory for Mohamed Ali, his first six rounder. He looks fresh, he's comfortable on the front foot because he started every round. I tell you what though, so I'm going to go back to Conlon, Conlon in Belfast. Belfast is just the best boxer city on the planet. And that would be just a great night. Unbelievable night. No doubt the roof is coming off that venue. That's Conlon for sure. brings a huge crowd out in Belfast every time, so there's always a magic atmosphere up there. Yeah. Can you be there, Gary? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Celebrating, Celebrating my victory. I'll <laughs> yeah. be back. I'll be up. But whatever it is, and whoever's boxing in Belfast is great. We have done some of your nights in Belfast. Yes. Don't we? You know what I mean? Yeah, small. Yeah, in the Ulster Hall. But it, it's a lovely group. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Back to this one and 
You see him, Comerso trying to hold the centre of the ring, but he's holding his feet a little bit more. Ali in this round, moving his head side to side again. That's all trying to draw the lead out from the Italian. Poke out the odd shot, but he's just reluctant to really let the shot go. There was a nice right to the body, but that lead hand from Ali felt like, but looked like rather that Comerso had felt that for a second, but still there's a bit of swelling. And wouldn't you have to right eye? Wouldn't you have to control that space between you and your opponent? That's the fight's yours, isn't it? That that space in the middle of you two, of the two fighters there, is where you need to dominate. And, and when you're the taller fighter, if you can if you can keep it long, you have a bit of power in, especially in that in that jab's got to be a bit of power just to discourage your opponent from walking forward. But when you don't have the fastest of feet, the Camaro doesn't have unfortunately, then that makes it an easier night for you. And if you just if you just stay disciplined with your work then he should never get anywhere near you. And the patience, like you said, Barry, no need to be trading with Comerso. I think Ali would rather Comerso throw more punches. You can see a lot of that non-punching activity is to draw out the, the lead again, changing the level with the shots really, really well. Not getting carried away, not getting greedy. He's been trying to draw him out, but I think every time Comerso gambles and throws a shot, he's getting hit back, isn't he? And he's getting hit hard as well, so um, he's reluctant to, to gamble on them shots now. Yeah, going into his shell ever so slightly. Nice work for punch combination and skips to his right, throws the left hand. And that, that's, we always want to see that, especially from a fighter moving the way up. That acceleration of pace and they work all of a sudden. They, they have a rhythm to the work, but they can change it and throw a five, six punch combination and with a bit of speed and accuracy. Oh, that's short take body. The body again, yeah, yeah. Nice shot. He followed it upstairs with a right hook. A little shove from Ali there. Maybe jab to the body a little bit, because then you, you know, because you've got that long stance, you can you can jab it and sort of lean back a little bit, and always invite your chin. But you're still you're still it's an illusion. You're not that close, but you'll, you'll see it. You'll see the target, and he might fancy the fancy attack, and then you've got it. Then you can throw that uppercut from a lower stance, more leverage in the shot. Sixth and final round here between Muhammad Ali and Giulio Comerso from Italy. And it's been good, disciplined performance from Ali. This is a real separation, really. There has been glimpses of real class from Ali. He puts his foot on the gas and goes through the gears. Really is a joy to watch. It's good work. Switches up well to the head and body, nice footwork. His first time in a sixth round or two, so yeah, he's looked really good tonight. Yeah, fresh, composed, comfortable, and starting to. That's what he, that's what he's been trying to do from the offset. Again, again, Comerso just came forward a little bit. Then there's a little half a step back there from Ali, and he threw a nice little blistering combination. He's starting to up the tempo now. Twos and threes. He's going again. There's two, three phases to the work of Ali now. He pokes out the jab, look at that left, the straight left to the body of Comerso. There's that jab to the body you're asking for, Barry. A bit of variation, and as I was going to say, you can follow. Oh, a nice left hook from Comerso. Just going to swing to the close. body from Arli, but just about to say you can follow that jab to the body with a left uppercut, but good work. It was a nice shot, not to say, from Comerso inside, but. I, I think what, what this fight has shown is the importance of a good, solid jab. That's what it is. That, 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 the taste the pace, the tempo of the fight. You, it, it, again, you can judge the distance from that if you're going to throw a follow-up attack. 
And that's what Anne Camusso hasn't been able to get past that jab. That's been the biggest problem for him. And the willingness to throw the punches might be there, but if you can't get your feet in the position to do it, you're never going to let the punches go. That jab, that distance control from Ali been really, really good for the full six rounds. And that's allowed him there, Gary Evans, to, to, to control the pace and do the rounds relatively comfortable. Yes. Into the last 50 seconds of this second contest, some before the bell. Back with that lead, going through the gears, looking good, looking comfortable, composed. To be fair to Ali, to be sorry, to be fair to Ali, without going too gun ho, he, he's trying now and again to put a bit of weight in the shots. He's, you see him biting on the gum shield now and again, trying to dig in some power shots. But you know, if they, to be fair, commercial hasn't really tried too hard to make a dent. Now he went into his shell, didn't he, early on? He realised he didn't have the speed of hand or foot to get close and just hasn't offered enough. He's landed the odd shot, a couple of hooks, but he's tried to draw out the lead. But it's been a good performance from Mohamed Ali, the young man, going through the gears in this final round. With a sharp one-two, to be proud of himself. Now a good performance. Really good performance, like what I see there from Ali. First time seeing him live and uh, yeah, really, really like what I see. Decent prospect. A little bit of everything there, Barry. We see some patience, we see some good shot selection. I think, I think he's a championship round fighter. It's still missing, it's not going to carry the way. It's still early days for him yet, but I, the way, the way he's just, with the, just the last 30 seconds there in that round. He had the tempo, he was more weight in his shot. Yeah, I think he heard Camusso with a body shot about 20 seconds to go. And then the last little combination there, I think he had Camusso in a little bit. And, and just a, a little smidgen bit of trouble. Not massively, but I think, you know, with another few more rounds, I think he gets the job done. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think he is a champion. Chip fights up, the more rounds the better. Because there was a lot of patience shown from Ali there, which was impressive. Such a young man, I could say, old head on white. Uh, sorry, old head on young shoulders. And, and, and after, after what was it, that wrong, was it wrong three maybe where he got caught with that decent shot, or wrong two or three? After that, apart from, apart from that yeah. little, little blip, there wasn't really much that he took back at him in, in, sort of, in sort of any sort of, any sort of fight or fight. He, you know, he pretty much dictated everything nice and long and comfortable. Kept his distance well, moved his head well, um, that jab all night, so yeah, he didn't really get hit with much either. Well, no doubt, both Muhammad Ali and Coach Dave Caldwell will be over the moon with the way he's progressing, always listening, always learning, looking better with every fight. The referee brings them both to centre of the ring. And hand over now to our MC, David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds, we go to referee Mark Lyson's scorecard. It reads 60 to 54 for your winner. He's still undefeated, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, Muhammad Ali goes to 4-0 and as a professional. Another very good disciplined display from the young man. Showed us a bit of everything there, variation, speed and power as well, completely stopped the Italian Julio Comerso getting into any rhythm whatsoever and that was down to the, the shot picking and the accuracy and just the general know-how and you can see the smiles in the ring from the team. Manager Sam Jones, coach Dave Caldwell, we're going to hear from the young man Muhammad Ali, he skips down to our reporter Jamie Ward is also with promoter Eddie Hearn. Let's hear from the victor, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, congratulations. Just nine weeks on from your third professional victory. You've moved 4-0 tonight here in Liverpool in front of your brilliant support who follow you all around the country. You can hear them there. Um, first six-rounder tonight. You've gone the six-round distance for the first time as a professional. What positives can you take from that this evening? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, what I've been working on in the gym, I was practicing that in the fight. Um, obviously, it's my first six-rounder. Would have liked it if I could stop him, but obviously, it's the first one, and we've got hopefully many more. Well, he could hold a shot as well, Julio Comerso. It was a step up on paper, your first unbeaten opponent with a winning record, had a bit of ambition. Did it feel like a step up? How did you assess his challenge in there tonight? I mean, look, he was a tough lad there. He was a game opponent. Um, but, I mean, I'm happy with the way that I, it went. I mean, there's stuff that we've been working on. Um, and it's been good benefits in that fight. 
We saw shades of the class, definitely through six rounds. And you were certainly putting some weight into those shots, as you say, you were pushing for the stoppage. But in terms of the activity now, is that just the most important thing for you? Yeah, I mean, look, obviously, I, I just turned 19 last year, and I'm still waiting for my uh, prize uh, present, yeah? I mean, last week, yesterday... I was going to say, that was yesterday, not last year. <laughs> yesterday, uh, I'm obviously, look, I'm still young, and hopefully just keep getting more fights and more fights. Well, let's grab a word with trainer Dave Coldwell. Dave, not sticking with the four-rounders for too long. They were saying at the commentary desk, which is a big compliment after four fights, that they believe Muhammad Ali is a championship fighter, that the later he goes in these fights, we're going to see him hitting the stoppages. What was your verdict from ringside tonight? I'm very impressed. I mean, you can't fault that performance. I think he, he was, you know, he's an inexperienced kid. I keep stressing, his last fights were against 15-year-old kids. You know, he's stepping up into men, and now on his fourth fight, he's fighting an unbeaten fighter. He wanted to stop him. We wanted to stop him. But it's just that confidence that comes with experience. Just the little things like taking himself out of range after every shot, when he could see the opportunities there, if he just held his feet a little bit. And when he did, he was catching with some really good shots. But it's building on that. He'll go back, he'll look at that and say, oh, right, okay, that's, that's what I need to do more of. And it's just experience and fights. We had to just getting him back to him and, and being allowed to develop. Like I say, it was nine, for those that aren't sure, it was 19 yesterday, not last week, not last year, yesterday. We'll let him off, we'll let him off. Uh, promoter Rudy Hearn, we said this to William Collar, didn't we, that about these fighters not just winning, but exciting too. Mohamed not quite able to force the stoppage tonight, but in terms of what we were able to see, that was impressive, wasn't it? It hasn't always got to come via a stoppage. You know, it's got to come through exciting performances. It's got to be setting your feet and actually forcing the pressure in the fight, which he did tonight. That was the first time against an undefeated fighter. It's been a great year. You know, four fights in, what, eight, nine months. And a special shout out to you guys on a serious note, because, like, you know, he's been so consistent with his support. These guys, every time, they followed him to Newcastle for the debut. Birmingham, London, and now Liverpool. They've followed him all over the country. And that's really important when you're building a, a fighter and trying to get on the shows. And like I said, that's it now for 2023. He'll be out in January or very, very early February. Continue that progression. Couple more six rounders, move into eights, build the strength up. Very talented young man. And, and eventually, one day, we will be in Leicester and these guys will pack it out there, you know? Like, that's, that's time. Go on, go on. Uh, a few technical difficulties, we are in to uh, share the mic, that's the beauty of live television. Mohammed, I'm going to leave the final one from you tonight. Eddie's talking about the support, I know you're so grateful, that's it for the year, but as you go back now, get back in the gym with Dave and build to a big 2024, what message do you want to leave for your supporters tonight? Look, I just want to say Alhamdulillah for the win, um, didn't get a stoppage, but I mean, you still got the victory. And I just want to say a massive thank you to all my supporters, all my sponsors, everyone that's helped me get to where I am right now. Mohammed Ali. Congratulations, 4-0 and oh, onwards and upwards. Well done to you, my friend. Congratulations. And a reminder that NFL Game Pass is now available on the zone. Catch every game live throughout the regular season. And there are some exciting week seven matchups this week, including the Bills will battle it out against the Patriots. The Steelers will lock horns with the Rams and the Miami Dolphins take on the Eagles. Plus, follow all the action as it happens on the zone, red zone. Well, two fights in here on Before the Bell as we build towards Jack Catchell versus Jorge Linares. Activity for any fighter is important. Um, and because of what Jack had sort of been through for 15 months in terms of getting the Josh Taylor rematch and then it falling through, he sort of didn't know which direction his career was going to go. And then so, so it was like a real sort of long winded um, journey for him. So eventually, him signing a contract with Matt Room and getting some stability and having a proper direction in where he was going it was the first sort of bit where mentally he starts getting in the right place. I believe. I can go on and win world titles and, uh, and make a good name for myself. If I don't believe in myself, then I can't expect my coaches, my family, the fans, anyone else to believe in myself. And I've got the right team now, uh, boxing coaches, strength coaches, nutritionists, I'm doing everything I can possibly do to put me in the greatest position, to get them world titles, get them big fights. My only, my sole focus next seven weeks now is I've got to beat Linares. We're counting down the days. A three-weight world champion.
We've never managed to beat him yet. That's the Jorge that's been to the UK three times and three times has beaten the British fighters. Come October 21st, a legendary fighter, Jorge Linares, is back in the UK and we're going for four. This is perfect team, perfect time for me, perfect time for boxing, perfect time for the zone, perfect time for job. I think it's perfect to make this amazing fight. I'm all in boxing already, four-time world champion. A lot of, I, I made a lot of good fights with a lot of good boxing. Haney, Lomachenko, Kevin Mitchell, Anthony Crowder two times. Now I'm super focused on the legacy. But to, to make a, a, a good legacy in boxing, you're working very hard. With Jab, it's an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing fight. I respect him. But October 21st, I don't care that I need to be focused. I need to be cure myself, amazing strategy, and win the fight. That's the more important thing for me. No matter what, how, I need to win the fight. <laughs> I wish him all the best in training camp, train, train hard, prepare well, because I'm certainly doing that, and uh, let's light it up October the 21st. Headlining in Liverpool, which is a great city just down the road from me. The kid's special, and I do believe that. I want to see how good I can be. He don't need to focus on the another, the, the another fight. He needs to focus on this, and he can be a champion anytime. But not this time. I'm here to be the best version of me. It's October 21st is soon. That's like tomorrow and I need to be ready for tomorrow. I'm excited now to, to get back to them big fights and be involved and see, see how good I can truly be. I'm the last samurai. Big thing is coming for me. I'm willing to do anything. I've got to beat him. Well, that is tonight's main event, and what main event it is. I cannot wait for that one. But next up here is another local favourite, Paddy Lacey. Fighters are ready, so let's hand over to your MC, Mr. David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, from Liverpool, England, we are set to go with our next contest. Eight rounds in the middleweight division. Set to make his ring walk, Owen Kirk. There is the 24-year-old from Haitian Lancashire, Owen Kirk. Nicknamed the captain. Now entering his seventh fight as a professional, winning three, losing the ones, and drawing his last two contests. His last fight was a hard end draw against Reese Wood at the White Hart Hotel in Bolton. Tough game, full of ambition and desire. And that is Haitian Oriko. And now entering the arena, the undefeated Liverpudlian. Please welcome Paddy Power Lacey. And here is the multi talented local fighter, Paddy Lacey. Up until the last couple of years, Paddy was known for his football. It's like I say, two years that he's really started to focus on his boxing. He has a real passion to succeed in a sport that he loves. Trot to the ring, full of confidence, spoke to him at the presser on Thursday. Says he wants to impress. The local fans have come out in their hundreds this evening. Understands he's still learning on the job, but he is hungry, as his Ringwalk song says. He's hungry for success also. Liverpool's Paddy Lacey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're set to go with our next bout of the evening, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stage Front, Forged Irish Stout, and Everlast. 
Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell, scoring a star referee from Fleetwood, Mr. Steve Gray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the middleweight division. Introducing first, wearing black with gold, he scaled 11 stone, 9 pounds, 10 ounces. His professional record, three victories, one defeat with two draws. Fighting out of Haysham, please welcome Owen Kerr. Kerr. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the green and gold trim. He scaled 11 stone, 9 pounds, 2 ounces. His professional record, a perfect one. Eight fights, eight victories, with one of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Liverpool, please welcome Patty Power Lacey. Lacey. I'll put with your waistbands, lads, so keep your punches off the shorts, okay? No punches on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up. Good luck, lads. Second down, round one. Here we go with first round of our third contest on before the bell in the blue corner. Paddy Lacey in with Owen Kirk in the black shorts on the back foot. Paddy Lacey holding centre ring and an impressive start to his career so far. Barry, 9 and 0 now, moving along nicely. Well, yeah, no, he started off very, very good. Nice, nice start. The hands always high, a good rhythm to his work. So it's a nice little left hook to the body, doesn't he? To throw the jab, hooks off it then, puts it onto the body quite well. So. There's been a lot, of, a lot of light with AC. Boxed last month, being experienced Mexican Fernando Valencia. Grand Central Hall here in Liverpool, winning comfortably. Speaking to him, like I say, Thursday, just wants to be active, wants to be busy. A good left hook there from he's nice sharp. Not much weight in it, but a good counter. Quick reactions. Yeah, come in the pro game, pretty inexperienced, like you say, so learning on the job, um, nine fights in, but in a decent fight here against a guy with a winning record, three wins, one loss, and two draws, so it could be a good fight. Yeah, he's tough, he's naturally aggressive, Kirk. He likes to push forward on the front foot, though, he's being pushed back here by Paddy Lacey, back in Kirk into the red corner. Oh, that's a nice lovely shot. left to the body, beautiful two, shot two, from Paddy Lacey, four, right under four, that right elbow of Kirk. No, I don't think he's going to make the count. What a start, what a finish from Paddy Lacey. That's how you entertain your local fans who have come out in their hundreds. It's that angle he gets on the shot. It's, it's the one that just lifts the diaphragm, isn't it? If he gets on behind the elbow, he lifts it up with it. And I don't think there's not a lot of weight today, but there's acceleration in the punch, and that, that gives you that, that, like, that little jabbing, stabbing feel. You know they're like that, and we've, we've all been put down with those. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, Horrible. They're hard to get up from, aren't they? They are. Gary, impressive display there. We've had two lightning fast finishes this evening, and that one was impressive. Really liked that one. He picked that shot lovely, just watching the back here on the screen boy he was very very patient seeing that shot really nice picked out that left hook well, it was nice shot, that beautiful wasn't it Barry you know taps what? upstairs yes. to the right and drops to the, the body the, 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 the most important part of the combination ironically is not the left hook to the body it's that tap with the right oh, hand yeah. isn't it yeah. it takes the emphasis when you're, when you're in a defensive mode especially the shell like defense that he had there Kirk with the hands around the eyes you can't really see you feel rather than see so once you feel a shot there you do you forget about your left side your right side sorry you protect your left side and then that right and now that allows Kirk then to throw that lovely left uppercut he was joking at the press conference uh, saying that everyone's saying that he can't really punch he's not a puncher well he's rubbish that right there and I've always thought that with these so-called non-punchers if you get caught round the body doesn't matter if you can whack or not, you'll drop your opponent. Well, we said at the very start of the round, though, you know, he usually does it off the jab, doesn't he? He'll, he'll hook off the jab quite well. Because he's tall, he sort of brings that right shoulder over his left knee and gets really good angle and leave it for that left hook to the body. And he does it quite well. Them shots then is not so much about power, but more about placement. So when you pick them out, there's not much that you can do about them. 
So you've got to accelerate, then a shot on you, because it's got to hit you. Ladies and gentlemen, really referee fast. Steve Gray calls a halt to this contest. He reaches the count of 10 of 1 minute and 40 seconds of round number one, declaring a winner by knockout. He's still undefeated, Patty Bauer Lacey. Paddy moves on to 10 and 0 as a professional, and you could say that's his best performance to date. Straight out, pushing Kirk on the back foot, who's, who, like I say, likes to, to be the aggressor usually, but he wasn't allowed. And it was a beautiful left to the body. Like Barry said, the tap upstairs was so important for him landing that shot. And all smiles there with the opponent. Not much you can do about that when you're dropped and knocked out by a body shot. He's just got to take that one. Changing words, the two of them respect there, obviously. No bad blood whatsoever in the build up, all business. You're saying to me that he's desperate to win the central area title. Hopefully, next year, his first ever coach, Paul Wright, was a central area middleweight champion, so he wants to win it for him. Uh, for him. He's here somewhere watching and supporting, still coaching, is Paul Wright. One of those great servants to the game so hopefully next year we can see paddy fighting for that central area middleweight title he skips over we're going to hear a word from our victor remote ready her next to him Just waiting for our reporter jamie ward since you've gone able for a second uh, he'd be over the moon with that, Paddy. Beautiful shot. They all seem to have been listening to Eddie about entertaining and exciting, though. Muhammad Ali didn't get the stoppage that he would have wanted. He looked very good. Naturally aggressive. He was on the front foot. He was focused. Trying to get the job done. But here is Jamie with Paddy Lacey. Paddy Lacey. Congratulations. I was just listening to Darren Barker on the commentary desk there, and he told him that you were joking throughout the week about people saying that you can't really punch. Yeah. I think you silenced a few of those critics tonight. How do you feel about what we've just seen? Yeah, um, to be honest, when I boxed amateur, I was went known for my boxing skills, just for punching, really. Everyone used to come, and I was flattening everyone, and then I turned over pro. My coach, Dave Tong, said, Pad, you can punch, but you can't box that well. We, don't. we need to improve, otherwise you get found out, even by a journeyman, some of them. You know, could have had good careers and they've went on the road and they'll, they'll find it out pretty fast. So I've been concentrating on my boxing. It's good to see the punching coming back in now, do you know what I mean? And that's a little repertoire of punches there, the right hook and whip it up. That me and my coach have been drilling, I've been hurting people in spas and it worked tonight, I was made up. To, to do it in front of your friends and family as well, we always talk about the great support you have here in Liverpool, Paddy, but why does that make everything that bit extra special for you tonight? Yeah, it was unbelievable, to be honest. I had a little bit of fire in my belly because I weren't the top uh, ticket seller this year and my mate Eddie here, he forgot about me on the press conference. I went, fuck me, Eddie, you forgot already. I do loads of tickets. So, you know, I had to just remind him tonight. But he's a good man. Have you forgiven him? Yeah, he always gets me on his show, so I, for I forgive him. Paddy, this was your first scheduled eight-rounder. You certainly didn't get anywhere near going the full 24 minutes tonight, but in terms of the confidence, because that was a decent little step up on paper, I believe your first opponent with a winning record, in terms of the self-belief that must give you, it must be huge. Um, yeah, not half, because Owen's a decent fighter. You know, he's got one loss, but if you watch it, he didn't really lose that fight. So um, he just said then, fucking hell, but I couldn't believe how strong he was. And I think my record suggests that you would think that, you know, I can't punch, but there's a little something there. So I'm winning, I'm staying on, sky's the limit. <laughs> and in terms of next steps, Area titles, what's in your mind, Paddy Lacey? We're going to hear from Eddie Hearn shortly. You might be able to direct that as well. But what's in your mind of what you'd like to do next? Um, to be honest, I said next season I want to win the central area. And then from there, I'll push through. But if I've only been, I'd be first for amateur fight in 2017. I was messing about. I just enjoyed fighting. I weren't really thinking about what I was doing. I've actually been thinking for two years now. And hopefully people can see improvements. And, you know, give me, give me another year, Ed and watch what I do in another year's time. Like, if you watch my first fight, go back to my first fight, and now you watch how I'm boxing now, in a year's time, I, you won't even recognize what I'm doing there, because I, I, I can just see in the gym, I'm improving, 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 I'm living the life, and, you know, bring it on. Let's go and get good fights. Let's bring Eddie in, Ed. We are gonna have to share this, Mike. Um, it's a bit close for comfort here. 
I don't know what message this was. You know, you were talking about this during the week about what I've just said to Ali, and in our first fight as well, to, to look good and excite. Whatever you've said is clearly working. Yeah, it was a, a really good performance. It looked like it was going to be a, a real interesting fight. You know, that was a good opponent. And we know, look, Paddy's been given slightly an easier opposition at the start because he's a former footballer, he sells a lot of tickets, and he's, he hasn't got a lot of experience. Now he's stepping up against fighters with a winning record, and that was a, a big night for him, a big performance. A lot of people were whispering to me this week, they think Paddy gets beat tonight. So, you know, it was a first-round stoppage. So I would like to see him just start to step up a little bit more and start moving to those area title fights. You don't want to be stale. And I know he's still got to learn, but at the same time, if you're doing that to an op opponent like that, you're not a million miles away from area title level already. So I think believe in yourself, believe in the momentum. And, you know, start, start looking towards those 10-round fights as well. I think he can fight, and I think he's exciting. No longer just a gimmick. It's something that's important to him and real now. And he is improving. He's dedicating himself. And that was, that was a big statement tonight. Like I said, there's a lot of people that looked at that fight on the card who know boxing and went, hmm, interesting one. Not sure about this Paddy Lacey. And no one predicted that he would do that tonight. So I definitely won't be forgetting him at the next presser. Uh, Paddy, last couple to you. Um, you ring walk to a song called Hungry for the Power tonight, and, and Eddie, Eddie used that word dedication. You say you've been living the life. How would you describe the determination and the passion you have to succeed in a sport that you truly love? Um, yeah, there was, there was always an itch out to scratch with boxing. My dad boxed, my two little brothers boxed, and there's just something inside it. I don't think it's inside everyone to go in and jump in and fight in front of however many and have fights, but it was there. and. I've started now and I've went pro and I'm just, I love the life I live, I love the discipline, I love waking up, I love training. And it's, it's like, I never had that with football, if I'm honest. My dad will be good at listening to that. I was half forced to play football, but boxing is what I've always wanted to do. It's, it, it's definitely in me. Final one from you, Paddy. For the, for the supporters, as always, it's always the way we let the fighters round off. I know that was a big win for you tonight and an emotional one as well, a big smile on your face. Just talk to us about that, the support and how grateful you are. Yeah, I. Without them, it's impossible. Like, all the tickets I sell, I know every single person. And Eddie will tell you in the past, I've done five, six hundred tickets, and I know everyone by name at all. I don't like to say fans, supporters, to, to me friends and family, do you know what I mean? And without them, I would not be sat here now, so I can only thank every single one of them. Well, from the football pitch to the boxing ring, 10-0 tonight, Paddy Lacey. It's a great story. It's a story, story that we're enjoying watching as well. So well done to you tonight, my friend. Well, like Jamie says there, 10 and 0 now, Paddy Lacey. And in two weeks' time, we head out to Monaco for a super featherweight world title fight. <laughs>to get over there, Barry. Uh, tough fight against Vasquez. We see him against Raymond Ford. He can fight. Yeah, no, he can fight. I, I, I just think that you have to be... I'm not being biased here because Joe Cardin is from my city, but you have to be a little bit special to beat Joe Cardin. I, I feel that much. And at the, at the minute right now, he's he shouldn't have, but I think he has a chip on his shoulder, Joe, and I don't know. I don't understand why that is. I understood why, you know, when he, when he, when he beat... Ogawa and then and then I've got the title stripped and then had the box rack him up to win a title back that he never lost. But I still think he has it. I still think he's there. I think he thinks he should be beyond no fights like this. He should be unifying titles because he's so good, he's so talented. It all sort of worked out for the best anyway. Because now he can say he's a two-time world champion. Oh uh, yeah, but I understand that. But you uh, to be announced as when you walk into the ring and, and they do the ring announcements and you know, and they say and the current champion of the world, all those sort of things that you, that you dream of as a kid. You want to go through that, and, he, and, he, and he'll get that, but he missed out on that, you know, and, that, and I understand that much, but just on skill levels alone, 
he's one of the most, if not the most, naturally talented fighters that we have. I mean, if you look at his last two fights, Gary, the, the knockout of a Gawa, I mean, I, I'm not joking. I think I've watched that about a thousand times. That, that's no exaggeration. And then he follows that up with that, I mean, breathless fight against Rackamob. What have you made of him so far? Yeah, I think there's, like you said, there's good, then there's world class, and then there's special. And I think Joe Green is special. And um, been watching him since he's been an amateur. He's obviously a southpaw like myself. And um, been watching him, he can, he can, he can switch it. And been watching his style. Um, but he's really, really good. He's, he's. Like I said, there's good, there's world class, he's elite. I believe Joe Cordain is elite. I believe he's up there with the with the biggest names in the division. He was calling out the Stevensons and stuff like that for a while, and I believe he's at that level, you know? But there was also a worry with Joe, you know, as skillful as he was, and he came down in weight, which I think was a good idea, from lightweight to super featherweight, because he's big, very big for the weight. That, and it's always, a, and I had it, because I couldn't punch to save my life. And when you get to a level, that's going to hold you back, and it does hold you back. But literally, that night he beat Ogawa, he went from Barry Jones to Colin Jones in a round and a half. He went from a guy who wasn't known as a puncher to, to a destructive world-class puncher. That, that shot resonated around the world, certainly in that division. And that, and, and that super featherweight division right now, with some really good fighters, there's no one who can, who can stand on top of the mountain and say, I'm clearly number one yet. And that's what makes it exciting. Shaki Foster, you no know, Navarretti, you no know, um, Oscar Valdez is, st is still there. There's loads of good fighters there. Constant so it's a really hard division, but there's no one there quite yet who can stand on top of the summit and say, "I'm the best." Without a doubt, I'm the best. And Joe beating Vasquez will go a long way to not cementing that, but to forcing the other fighters, the other champions, to go up against him. Who do you think he would have learned and taken away from that fight with Rakimov? Because it, it was a bloody he didn't war. Learn, he, learned, he learned nothing. We learned. All those things we weren't sure about. Is, you know, you know, can he take a good shot? What's he like in a war of attrition when all his beautiful skills don't work and he has to dig deep and fire off? And he did it all in that night. That was the that was the worry about the Ogawa fight. When he had that fight, he hadn't had the opportunity to show that he could, they had the minerals, if you like. No, to, to, to compete in a hard, brutal fight at world level. And he didn't do that. But in the, in the, in the Rakamov fight, he had to do that. And he came through it in flying colors. Yeah, it was incredible. That is one of many fights, Cordina Vasquez, with British and Irish interest in it. If we look at the schedule coming up, it really is something to look forward to. Obviously, tonight we have that intriguing main event, Jack Cattrall versus the legend, Jorge Linares. Then the fight we've just been talking about, Joe Cordina versus Vasquez. And then it's the rematch, the challenger. Yes, the challenger, Katie Taylor versus champion, Chantel Camera, Saturday, November 25th. Then we're over in Phoenix, Arizona for Bam Rodriguez versus Sonny Edwards, Saturday, December 16th. That's live. On the zone, all of those, all part of your subscription with the zone. So much to look forward to. R reminder: the cat is back in Liverpool. Jack Cattrall, one half of tonight's main event. This man, Jack Catchell, takes on Jorge Linares this Saturday at the MS Bank Arena. Jack Catchell joins us now. Jack, I remember we spoke straight after the Daryl Foley fight. I remember Sam Jones was in front of us saying, call out Regis, call out someone. Be honest, when you heard it was Jorge Linares, what were your in initial thoughts? You know what, after, after the last fight, obviously I won a challenge for these world titles and being these big fights, but uh, that wasn't available. And for me, uh, they called up, they said Jorge Linares. And after all that time of inactivity, I was yeah. happy to get a fight. And, uh, Linares is a great fight for me right now. Yeah, I agreed. Obviously, look, I mean, 2020 was nothing for you. 2022, just the one fight. Nothing in 2021, obviously, because of COVID. So you want to stay busy, don't you? That's the plan. Of course, yes. If, uh, if I, like I said, I couldn't get a shot at the world title fight, this is the next best thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Linares, uh, three-weight world champion, yep. four world titles. Uh, so I'm excited for this Saturday now. Yeah. You're coming around, Jack, and, and you've been, you're always in camp, you're always in shape, you live the life. You know, Jamie push your hard and that they look after you well. What do you do you see as the danger being with Linares? People are saying that he's on the slide and he's washed. Now, 
I heard this many years ago, and then he came over in B three of our men. <laughs> Are you looking at it and watch and, and what, what's your thoughts on him? Yeah, of course. For me, it's uh, Jorge is 38 now, so you, you we're under the presumption it's like his last chance, which makes him dangerous. He's gonna he's gonna come and bring it. He knows that uh, the winner of this fight uh, moves into bigger fights, but for him, if he loses this fight, it's kind of what options has he got? Yeah. Where does he go? Uh, and with with Linares, you said that the last thing I'm told the last thing that leaves a fighter is the power, so he's always had that that punch power, so he, he does bring a threat still. Technically, he's very, very good. We were talking just before you came in, before myself and Adi, and, and my point was is, you know, everyone's expecting you to win this and you expect fully to win it yourself, but, and I don't want to bring it up, and I know it's before this fight, but ultimately yourself and Josh are going to be synced forever until this fight happens again. Do you agree with that? Because that's what I've just said on camera before you've come on. I've said, none of these fights are going to be able to, be, be able to fully move on with the career until it happens again. Do you think that's a fair assessment? Yeah, of course. I've just walked through the building for the press conference and two people have mentioned it to me already. Wow. So Gee. that's where we're at with it. But uh, yeah. like I've said to me, manager Sam, my training team, they know me. Don't mention any other fight to me. I've got to beat Linares on Saturday. Yeah. Nothing else matters right now apart from beating him. Okay. What um, Jorge Linares do you prepare for? Do you, do you watch tapes of some of his best performances? Even the loss to Vasil, where I thought he looked excellent. Or, or do you watch tapes of his recent defeats? What, what do you prepare for? You know what, I've been preparing to be the best version of myself. Uh, there's so much content of Linares you can watch. He was professional back when I was in high school, so you can watch... Uh, 2002 tips, made his debut, from yeah. From 20 years ago, but I'm preparing for the best version of Linares, uh, no matter what anyone says. Do you look at the landscape at 140 right now? Obviously, we've got the big fight with Regis and Devon. Tifimo's out there. Um, Josh is out there somewhere as well. We don't know what he's doing in terms of next. Do you look at the landscape and think, I need to be right in the mix, right at the top of that? Yeah, I think this fight with Linares puts me puts me back in that mix. Uh, it's a great division. The fighters that are coming up from 135, the whole, incredible division, the whole 140 divisions mm. are alive. So that's kind of the carrot dangling, the excitement of coming through Linares and getting getting into these big fights. Seven, eight thousand we're hearing um, on Saturday. That must be exciting as well. Obviously, look, cost of living's tight, right? But people are still turning up for you. That must be good to know, and you still got that support behind you. Yeah, very grateful for that. Uh, after the, the period of inactivity yeah. and uh, the cost of living crisis, but uh, you've seen it at the last fight, it was co main event to Woodlara, and the, the fans were there, and uh, Eddie's given us this opportunity to headline in this beautiful city, and the fans are turning out for it. Indeed. What do you, when you're studying the likes of Jorge, Jack, and, and you look at him as say, he's long in the tooth, he's been in the game a long time, but what do you consider his dangers, his attributes, you know, his, his mistakes, his flaws? What do you see when you watch him? Yeah, so we've been watching him now for, for the last 12, 15 weeks, and uh, the slip right hand, he's still got it. The, yeah. the left hook, he, he comes big with the left hook. He likes the body shots. He doesn't like taking the body shots. So there's yeah. certain little flaws that we've, we've picked out. And uh, he likes to sometimes ambush the fighters with the combination punches. But I believe in my time and an ability, I'm going to catch him in between them, them combinations. From watching Jorge Leonardo's and studying him myself, I'd say he's been in the game a long time. I, I, I think there's a difference in him when he's out training in Tokyo or Japan, whatever it is. There's a difference too when he trains in one place than there is another. Have you have you seen anything any difference in the way he performs? Like when he goes out to Tokyo or Japan, he perform he's on fire, mm. and then when he comes in, he's preparing from the states. It's a different version of him, kind of. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've not been into it too much. I've seen that the last couple of fights, he's not had Salas in his corner. Mm. Now we know that for the last two months, he's been in Vegas with Salas. Yeah. Uh, and there's there's certain things that that gym tends to do, and they mm. try to work on and implement. So we've seen that, but. Uh, like we just said earlier, I'm just preparing for the best version, the version where he's in Tokyo and he's, he's knocking fighters, I'm preparing for that Linares. Yeah. Is there pressure to make it look really good on Saturday? Again, this is a guy who fight in 38. Those are just the facts, three defeats in a row. One of those uh, was a knockout defeat as well. Is there a pressure to make a statement, to almost tell the division, I'm here? Yeah, I put that pressure on myself. Yeah. Uh, I believe in my ability. Uh, and I need, to, I need to put a stamp on it this weekend to, to put my name forward for these big fights. Does it have to be world title or, or bust next year? Do, do you have to fight for a world title next year? Yeah, I've been a professional 10 years now, uh, and I believe that next year, uh, God willing, we come through Saturday night. I think that world titles are definitely on the table next year. Can I play a game with you very quickly? Yep. Very quickly, last question, I promise. If I offered you the chance of fighting Teofimo Lopez for a world title, the winner of Haney Progre or Josh Taylor rematch, what are you taking? I'd like to beat Josh up again. <laughs> wow, I like it. it is, so it's not, not a case of world titles once the Josh fight. And do there's no world titles on the line. I mean, listen, uh, sorry to butt in, but do you class yourself as a world champion? No. I, 
Mm. No. No, I've not got a world title, the man's no, on peace, but... I know, I get that, but 99% of us do. 99.9. .9. No, I've not got a world title yet, but I will get one. You certainly will. I believe so as well. Fantastic performance last time. I'm expecting a really good performance this Saturday as well. Jack Catchell versus Jorge Linares. Headlines our main event on Saturday. Well, for the first time in Before the Bell history, I think, we've got some time to fill, uh, which tells you probably just about how exciting the first three fights have been tonight. Yeah, it's my fault, because I said, fighters now, we've got to be more exciting. You know, you've got to go through these levels when your level's above. And outside of Paddy Lacey, which was supposed to be a 50-50 or a competitive fight, everyone's looked good. Great performance from William Crawler, destructive punching. Aki, uh, sorry, Aki Fiaz, Muhammad Ali looked good. Um, you know, was, was active and, and tried to force the stoppage. And Paddy Lacey, and now Campbell Hatton's coming up in, in a tough fight. Well, let's talk about Campbell Hatton, because would you believe it? Professional fight number 14, um, second eight rounder, second southpaw as well. When you take yourself back to that night in Gibraltar, um, I, I felt for Campbell that night, because he did more media than I've ever seen AJ do, I think, that week, building up to his debut. But how pleased can you be with, with the strides he's been able to take forwards in those 13 fights. Yeah, I'm pleased. You know, it's difficult for him because he started as a complete novice and most fighters who are in their 14th fight are in 10 rounders. They're in domestic titles, British titles. And he's always going to get a bit of stick from the, this kind of boxing hardcore because he's going slowly, because he's got a lot of work to do. You know, we talked this week about the need to make competitive fights and to push people into exciting fights. We also, as I said in those interviews, you've got a responsibility to the fighter to give him an opportunity to develop. Tonight should be a competitive fight, but he's kind of run out of time now. You know, I believe the next fight will be a 10 round fight and he'll have to move to English title level and British title. And, and that's where we're gonna see what the developmental phase has done for him. You know, if, if he's not good enough, he'll get beat at that level. But I believe we've given him every opportunity Tonight is the last box to tick before he's in those kind of fights. I was talking to his team this week and they said he, in this camp he spent a couple of weeks in America with Virgil Hunter and, and Manny Robles and he went out there with the attitude of a sponge just to soak up absolutely everything. I think everyone thinks because he's Ricky Hatton's boy, he's, he's had the luxury of travelling around the world, but really it's been Hyde and Tenerife for his training camps. How useful do you think those experiences in the States will be for him as well? Yeah, that, that, that time in the gym is sometimes just as important as a time in the ring you know, when you're working alone with, with quality coaches. You go back to Conor Ben. you know, when he started, he was the same, he was a complete novice. And that time in the gym, he actually had a, around nearly a year out with an injury to his jaw and his hand, and he just stayed in the gym, he just learned from Tony Sims, and it really brought him on. So, you know, these guys who have legends as fathers in the ring, it's not that easy for them. People think, and, you know, the doors open through that opportunity. But don't forget, everyone will always compare him to Ricky Hatton who was a British boxing legend, and, and maybe he won't be Ricky Hatton, but he's a good kid that's working really hard and, and you know, working at his craft. And that, that time in America, that time with Virgil Hunter and Manny Robles, you know, I'm, I'm looking to see a performance tonight that can make the, the, the critics maybe say, OK, fair enough, we're seeing the improvements. Because like I said, soon it will be sink or swim. We look forward to seeing the return of Campbell Hatton very shortly, actually, here in this ring behind us. You mentioned Conor Ben there. Now, I know for the fans listening here in the PA and, and watching at home as well, we we'll keep hearing dates, December 23rd, Chris Eubank Jr. What, what is the latest, Eddie, on that front? Yeah, I mean, you know, the most impatient man right now is Conor Ben because he wants to get back in the ring. And he's not going to wait forever. You know, if we can't make the Eubank fight, you're going to see him back very soon. Really, you know, we wait on the news of Fury Usyk. Clearly, December 23 is a competitive date. We don't really want to go the same night as Fury Usyk. I don't think they'd want to no. go the same night as Ben Eubank. So we are looking at some January dates as well. Um, but I'm 100% confident that fight happens. I really am. I think it's the biggest fight that can take place in Britain. And we hope that the board grant us that opportunity to do the fight in Britain. If not, we will take one of the site fees that we've been offered and we'll do it internationally. But there's a chance there to do a stadium filler in a, in a fantastic fight. And uh, as I said, everyone impatient but you've got to let us do our work and it won't be long now. We look forward to news on Conor Ben and we look forward to great night of boxing, of course. One place to watch it, that is The Zone. Let's hand back to your commentary desk. Mr Darren Barker is with us. So 13 fights in Campbell Hatton. What have you made of his development as a pro so far, Barry? Well, to be honest, it's been a steep learning curve, I would say that. And it's been in the spotlight, so it's been difficult for him. 
he didn't look great when he turned pro. I've got to be honest, he, there were holes and big gaps in him, but I think he's slowly improved. I think he's getting his boxing together. He's not trying to rush his work. And with that, he's looking better, looking more composed. But there's still a lot of work to do. Gary? Yeah, um, like I said about William Crowley earlier on, you come in and with a, with a dad with such a big name, he got a lot of pressure on his shoulders, you know, and I think that he felt that early on in his career. But his last couple of fights, he seemed to have settled down a little bit. Um, he's got some amateur experience behind him, and that's starting to come true and starting to show. He's learning a lot about the pro game, obviously, as well. And um, I'm starting to like what I'm seeing the last few few fights I've seen him in. Well, Campbell's ready, so is his opponent, and so is our MC, David Diamante. So let's hand over to him now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we crack on with an eight-round super lightweight affair. Making his way to the ring, please welcome Jamie Samson. Walking to the ring is Sheffield's 32-year-old Jamie Samson. He comes into this contest with a record of nine wins and just two defeats. His last fight was a loss to Wiltshire's 10-0 Conor Gray over six rounds. And though he lost the bout, it was only by a couple of rounds. And remarkably, that was his first fight back after a long nine-year absent from the sport. There wasn't much sign of ring rust. And he, um, the unbeaten fighter was frustrated by his movement and he was slick. So he was trying to do the same tonight against Campbell Hatton. And now entering the arena, the undefeated Mancunian, Campbell, the Hurricane Hatton. So what to the ring for the 14th time as a professional is Hyatt's 22-year-old Campbell Hatton. And if you didn't already know, he is a Man City fan. In his last contest, he beat Hitchens, Tom Ansell, completing the eight rounds distance for the first time, winning 78-74 and referee Sean McAvoy's score scorecard. Starting to fight really well against Ansell. He was patient, he wasn't greedy, he was picking the shots well, and there's signs that it's starting to come together for Campbell Hatton. More thought in his work, the power, the physical presence. Just as I look through the ropes, sat next to Eddie Hearn is his dad, Ricky, an absolute legend of the sport. So let's see how Campbell gets on in his 14th contest. Ladies and gentlemen from Liverpool, England, live on the zone. We are set to go with our next bout of the evening. And it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stage Front, Forged Irish Stout, and Everlast. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Liverpool, scoring A star referee, Mr. Mark Lyson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the super lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue and gold. He scaled 10 stone, one pound, two ounces. His professional record, nine victories against two defeats, with two wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Sheffield, please welcome Jamie Sampson. Sampson. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the black with the red trim. He scaled 10 stone, 2 pounds, 14 ounces. His young professional record, perfect, 13 fights, 13 victories. Five of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Manchester, England, Campbell, the Hurricane Hatton. Hatton. Okay, boys, don't go the rules. It's you obey my commands. Tell you to break, break clean. Defend yourselves at all times, boys. Touch gloves. Pull up, boys. Yeah. 
Seconds out, round one. It's about number 14, the young Campbell Hatton. In with Jamie Sampson, from Sheffield. A lot been mentioned this week about when Hatton may potentially fight for titles. He's doing his job correctly, he's pr producing the wins, st you know, stepping in the right direction on the front foot here against Sampson. Yeah, but this is a fight, you've got to be careful here with Sampson because you know, against the southpaw, he sits on that back foot there and kind of do the, the overreach. So you can just pop you with that left hand, that, you should see that long southpaw looping jab there of his. Just to encourage you there, just to lean over to your right there, so he get, it leads you onto that left hand. Like I say, he was out the ring for nine years. Come back, fought an unbeaten fight, a 10 0. Conor Gray, as I mentioned, he, he moved and frustrated the unbeaten fighter, so plenty left in the tank. So he's going to have to be patient, Campbell. He's got eight rounds. Yeah, likes to get on the back foot, Samson. Uh, South pass stands as well, so could take a bit of figure and out for Campbell Hand. And it just makes it more difficult to establish that jab, which he needs to close the distance. That's what makes it harder for him. If he's that, if he don't get the foot on the outside, he's still always happy with the help. Just that punching in the middle of the body, and that, that leaves you exposed there for that right hook. See the pressure on the front foot already from Campbell Hatton. This is Samson's first eight rounder, so with that long layoff that he did out nine years, and the younger man Hatton forced the pace and makes Samson feel all those 32 years. Preparation for this fight for Campbell's been very good. Spider Jack Cattrall doesn't get much better than that for Campbell Hatton. He's also sparred with a local fighter, Tyrone Bowen Price. Matthew Hatton, uncle, so he's progressing nicely. He's had a good camp. Be careful there, Sam. So it's the right sort of idea there is just to frustrate Hatton, dart in with a shot and hold him, but you've got to just make it not so obvious. He's trying his best to get close, isn't he? He's getting really, really close and just a little predictable. Just, Patton, just reaching a little bit with that left hand. I'd like to see him set it up a little bit more um, behind a couple of feints. But this pressure will be felt the more this fight goes on. Really making Samson move, however, like I say against Conor Gray, he moved for six rounds comfortably. He was under a lot of pressure, but just had a very close fight. Samson pushing Campbell's young man just spins. Samson back round. What Hatton can do is when, when he misses with an attack, he takes a step back, you've got to stay there. Just sit down a bit lower, and just take a little turn to the left or the right, and then go again. First round in the bag. Keep coming in behind that left hand. Getting that jab to the right foot to the body. Keep working the angles, head moving, touching the feeding. Look for the feints. And again, coming behind that left hand. Good jab. Hook that body or bring you up top. Yeah. Good start, that. Keep trying when he's holding you. Try and skip round. If he's weight right, pressing against you, take that little skip round with him in the middle. He will not get away with this only, trust me. Press on his case already. When he loses that, he's fucked. Stay patient, don't get frustrated yet. Push that, that. Plenty of time. Second out, round two. Bit of a cagey... First round, Campbell trying to get close. Samson moving, we expected that. Holding the centre in to start this second round, though. It's a tricky one here for Campbell Hatton, because he has to be a little bit more aggressive. He's got to close the distance quicker. But with that, rushing in, he's going to walk on the shots here for Samson. But if he doesn't close the distance quicker and put Samson a bit of pressure, Samson's going to have that confidence here that that's hot shot from way far out. That was a nice right hook from Campbell. He's holding on Samson, he felt that was a lovely shot. Just went round that left side of Samson. On the back foot, he's moving, it looks like he's recovered. It was a good shot, Gary. Yeah, I feel like he's just reaching a little bit though. Um, Campbell Hatton here. I'd like to see him, like I said in the last round, set it up through a few feints, move his head a little bit more on, on the way in. Um, a little bit predictable coming in. 
trying to rough up Samson inside he's again he's trying to hold trying to unsettle the younger man referee just having a word just trying to get right on his chest here Campbell and uh, put that pressure on did you see you got to see nice and low though that'll help him see low is harder to punch down with accuracy make sure a smaller target and allows you just to just engage those bigger muscles in your legs to push off with a bit more speed spent a bit of time out in the States Campbell Matthew Robles and Virgil Hunter both giving him similar advice and said he's taking it all on board and to go and show how disciplined he's been in camp he's been the majority of the time in hide in the Hatton gym well, his, his biggest mistake he makes happen for a long time is just lifts the chin a bit high every now and again and then sometimes when you're running after your taxi he's just, you know, he, he can be caught with a counter because of that it's going to just stay nice and low. keep that head constantly a moving a moving target all the time yeah chin does come high at times but like i say the last few contests a bit more thought in what he's doing do like the, the work to the body and as i say that lovely right to the body from hatton seen shades of the sort of technical stuff that his dad used to do with the tap upstairs and the drop down to the body with the left legs dropping that left into the body he does then he yeah good shot just overreaching with the right there there's that left as samson just walks on to the shot just needs to show him something here samson that's good work just needs, just needs to remind hatton that there's, you know, there's stuff coming back and make a mistake yeah, just before that right hook that landed, there was a bit of confident sort of spring in the step from Samson. You know, an awe of the man that wants to be the first to beat Hatton. Put under pressure, second half of that round. Listen, do not hang about too long now, right? That's third round. A bit more success there, I thought, for, 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 for Campbell Hatton in that, in, that, in that second round. There, just, just closing the distance a little bit quicker before. You know, he's still reaching slightly, as Gary was saying, but just trying to close the distance quicker with his feet before he lets it go. Struggling with the salt ball stance a bit because he likes to work off the jab, and that's understandable. So just making him take that bigger step to the left, over to the left side, before you let that left hook of the body go, will help him just adjust you know, to that salt ball stance. Pressure was definitely a little bit higher in that last second round from Campbell Hatton, so uh, I think he's starting to squeeze them inches a little bit, a little bit quicker and a little bit better in, in, as the fight goes on. But Samson got that then his punch is going up the more now. He is the counter puncher, he's trying to draw on Campbell Hatton, trying to force him to make a mistake, but he's still maybe now and again has to be a little bit more proactive like that. Yeah, that was better from Samson. It's a one-two and he just skipped to his right around the left side of Hatton. Better from Hatton though, he doubled up with the left hook. Oh, he shot. Yeah, he's over that right hand again. It was the step with the front foot the one that he took a step across to the left. Even though he anchored himself into the into the canvas for let that shot go. He just walked onto a lead right hook from Samson there, Hatton. Got to keep that left hand up. Oh, heads coming close together there. I think he'll prefer this though, Campbell Hatton. Samson letting his hands go. It's the movement that frustrated Hatton in the first couple of rounds, but the more that Samson commits and lets his hands go. Gives the opportunity to happen to land the counter. The more he stands in front of him, the more danger he's going to be in for sure. Just trying to change the angle a bit there, Hatton. Just going to keep, even if it's just a pendulum motion with his head, just keep that head moving all the time. It's a big shot there from Samson, and that that eradicates that. Then you don't, you're not, you're not stood up tall, giving a target for Samson to aim for. Pushing in with that double jab hat and falling over the front foot. There's been clipses in some of his recent fights where he just snaps the shots out. It's so much better and more effective. But he does get in the habit of pushing the shot as opposed to snapping it out, Hatton. 
He needs to sharpen up a little bit in this contest. Samson able to avoid the shots at the minute, landing a big right hook, followed by a left hand, moving. Like I say, very comfortable on the back foot, Samson. No issues. But the eight rounds could be. Yeah, and sneaking in some nice shot here as well, Samson. Good work. Left hand, another left, straight down the guard of Hatton. A little bit of swelling under that left eye of Hatton. Yeah, it's a little crazy there, isn't it, it looks like. Can't be, can't be predictable, Barry. And also, that's the difference. You just see where Samson walked, Hatton back there from the, from the ropes. The strength might possibly, even though he, he's the aggressor here, Hatton, the strength might actually be in the favour of Samson. Just walking on to a couple of shots, Hatton, that lead right hook. He's having a lot of success with that shot, Samson. He's got to sharpen up, Hatton. He tried... He's trying to force the pace, mind you, fair. I think he's trying to rush his work a little bit, but he's trying to just speed it up. Oh, another there. jab, yeah, lovely jab from Samson. Again, lots of pressure, though, from Hatton. On that front foot, moving his head. Putting a bit of pressure on him now. Again, but don't get predictable. Keep the fence coming. And when he looks for a split second, just step right up to him again and the head moving, hands nice and tight. Keep that foot on the outside as well. And when you do, he's having a little bit more of a go now, present more opportunities to you. Nice and smooth it's not. Don't load up. Keep the pressure on, keep letting the hands go, but don't load up yet. Give him a drink, can't it? How you feel? Yeah, you feel. Look for that uppercut. Up middle, right? Fall it in. Right, fall it in. Time it. Up middle, and then drop downstairs, and then spin off. Right, little bit of movement, side to side. Right. Little. Into the fourth round we go. Few tricks and puzzles that are overcome here from Samson Hatton. Yeah, just letting them hands go from a little bit far out. I think I'd like to see him get his feet inside first before he starts letting the hands go. Just changing the levels there, but leaning over the front foot instead of bending the knees. Well, what, what you were saying earlier, Gary, that was the, the feints to get close the gap, isn't it? That's the perfect, the perfect foil for it. Just feints, feints, real sharp stabs to the front foot. He's coming with the hands rather than the feints. He's just throwing that from a little bit far out, getting caught on the way in by Samson, and then he's moving off with that nice footwork as well. This is his eighth, sorry, fourth, eighth rounder, Campbell Hatton. He's actually looked fit in the past. No problems with him doing the distance. It's just that question with Samson, who's been put under pressure. Will he be able to keep up with this pace? But so far, looking very composed, relaxed. Popping the shots out, that straight left, the lead right hook. Very accurate with the shots, just walking on to that left to the body though from Campbell Hatton. I would say though, every time they get close, he's holding for dear life, Samson. Oh, good shot there from Samson, good right hand. Again though, it's because because Hatton stands tall with the chin up, every shot he takes looks like a bigger shot than it actually might be. Yeah, getting picked off at times, Hatton. Trying to get closer, but it's the elusive footwork, the nimble feet of Samson. Just slipping, grabbing old, like you say, just spinning Campbell Hatton. He's got to be careful, Samson. He's doing a lot of holding. Referee has warned him. There's that right hook again, just walking on, spinning off. Boxing well, isn't he, Samson? Yeah. Nicely here, Samson, yeah. He's enjoying this. As Barry said, every time they get to the ropes or get into the corner, he's holding on for dear life. And, and it's too obvious, and it was too obvious from the first round. And you can see the referee now maybe starting to get frustrated himself. And he's not careful there, Samson. If you can hold him close, that allows Hatton free reign then. But from distance, Samson's doing well. Moving nicely, just popping out, popping out that left hand again. And the jab. And desperately trying to find those body shots, trying to slow down the movement of Samson. Well, you can't fault the commitment the other hand. No. He's fully committed to trying to get there, but it's just, you know, as Gary was saying earlier, that, that to be able to close that distance, he's just, you no, know, he hasn't quite figured out how to get from A to B. Like we say, Samson comes into this with a winning record. Nine wins, two losses. First of those losses was, like I say, over nine years ago, so. 
full of ambition in this contest. Again, trying to walk Hatton onto the shots. He's just getting a little frustrated in there. Yeah, Hatton there, fully committed to closing that distance. Now just swinging everything he's got and clipping Samson time for time. But as the run went on, I go, Samson just you know, controlled the pace. You know, he was constantly moving, but never running, holding his feet to Lanson. Good shot, but holding is the word. He is continuously holding and closing. You can understand why Hatton's getting frustrated because when he does get close, he's having no success from range. When he gets close, that's his time to do his job. And Samson's holding on along to the referee at some point has to get Samson some sort of warning to say a lot a lot happens to, to throw punches clearly. Yeah, he's got to be a little crude with that holding Gary, hasn't he? Samson. Yeah, yeah, you've got to uh, you've definitely got to be smart with it. You can't you can't be so obvious like Barry's saying because the referee will catch on to it. It's it's needed sometimes but the referee will catch on to it and um, I think he'll start getting warnings for it going down the stretch. Listen, I've, I've held on to ankles, I have in the past, and whatever, you know, whatever you do to get through the round at times, but yeah, you've got to be a little bit, um, a little bit subtle with it. Let's see if he can be a bit more cute with the dark arts. Samson, who's back on the front, uh, back foot moving, trying to poke out that jab, followed by the left hand. Again, a little laboured by Hatton, just launching him with that left hook to the body. Better with a follow-up left hook, missing with the right hand afterwards though, and again, Trying getting to picked off. Again. Again. That was a little bit better from Hatton there, because when, when Samson moved to his right, he took a step across to his left there, Hatton. Just, just blocked it, he just blocked the exit route. That was a nice jab. Took this thing out of the shot, Samson, but it was best side, was sharp from Hatton, let's do some more of that, sharpen up the shots, missing with the long left hook there. I think when you get frustrated, you start to tense up a little bit more as well, and what, what Hatton needs to do here is settle down a little bit, relax, and um, like I said, close the distance with the feet before he lets the hands go. Yeah, Samson holding again, if we didn't say no, but it's a nice one too though, he follows it up with a nice straight left. Get scrappy in there. Halfway through this fifth round. But you'll do what you can get away with. As long as the referee's not warning him, you'll, then you'll, you'll continue the Samson. Listen, I've seen a lot worse, and I'm making up this is uh, he's playing the contest here, because from distance, he's, you know, he's in charge of it, isn't he? They're both landing there. There's a nice jab from Hatton. He just left himself there, left the chin high and allowed Samson to throw the right hook. Got a lot of success with that shot. And that rear left hand straight down the middle. Again, just seeing the movement. You need to see Hatton cut the ring off, pin Samson into the corner. What, what, what are you going to do? You've got to throw in combinations here, Hatton. And if he's throwing them too far out, he has got to move the feet with his, with his hands. Very close to distance when he's throwing. He's going to do that. He might have to take a shot to, to get through it, and this might be the warning. Long would you maybe you would say, to be fair. Samson realizes that as well. Well, he just looked, didn't he? Yeah, of course he, 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 did. he knows it. It was just far too obvious with the holding. It'd be annoying. There's that right hook again. The movement, from Samson. The movement has been very, very good. Oh, oh he just shit. walks Hatton onto a beautiful lead right hook. The left hand, the Hatton was low. He walks onto the shot. That was lovely. When he gets on his box, and he's really nice. He, he was focused a little bit too much on the hole in there, I think, for the last couple of rounds. But when he gets back on his feet, on his box, and throwing his shots, he looks really nice. I tell you what, you need to create some distance here and, and just drill a right left hand right down the guard here. So the point off for Samson, but some good shots landed from the man from Sheffield on the back foot once again. Some good head over there from Campbell, but then she comes back up there again, comes back up with the hands low, chin high, and takes a lovely right hook there from Samson, who in stages there, I think Hatton would start the round pretty well, but in stages there, a lot of heart for that round. Certainly after he got warned there, Samson got his boxing together lovely and so picked up some really, really quality. Right, this is shots. where his mental side starts. Yeah. 
right. so far, Nelson. Samson frustrating right. Hatton with Josh his footwork. Right. And this man here bring his feet in, get closer to the man from Sheffield. Still three rounds to go. Um, I think it's going to come down to conditioning here as well, as we've always already seen Samson take that that point, that that warning for the for the hole in earlier on. So he's got to get on his feet and, and show his condition and really box for these last three rounds. Yeah, the corner and the fans of Samson really trying try to gee him up. Well, Samson has shown that rather than hold, he can spin around with the front foot. He can. No, 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 get away from Hatton. So just throw the shots, take that little turn on the on the right foot, a little pivot. Again, a safe place. Walking onto the jab again, Hatton. Moving his head nicely, avoiding the hooks from Samson, but he's got to find something here. Good work to the body, just misses with that last right hook. Chin again, Barry, like you mentioned, high yeah, but from Hatton. But he starts off moving his head. The, the, the initial movement is right, and he's moving his head, but then he stops and lifts it up. And, that, and that, 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 that makes him a target to hit. That's better. Good yeah, that was good. He's a step to his left as he threw that double jab, avoiding the, the right hand coming back. Pressure is nice from, from Samson. Hatton. That was good, wasn't it, Gary? Good pressure. Felt that body shot there, Samson, I think. Yeah, yeah, working really the body. The gears here now. Yeah, working the body nicely, slowing down the, the legs of Samson, trying to sap him of energy. It was a right, right hook to the body. I think he felt that, Samson. He's to show us something again now. A nice good jab he's got. And he's just trying to buy seconds here now, Samson. I think he's running out of gas. Yeah, there's a nice little short right hand to the body once again from Hatton. Again, he holds on, Samson. To spins around the back of Hatton. I think he senses this Hatton. He walks onto a jab there, but he's felt the physical presence, the movement. Just slowed down ever so slightly from Samson. He's trying to look for that left hand again. He got a double jab his way in here in Old Hatton and then dipped down with the left hand to the body. Just hook off that last jab. Yeah, this is always going to be the big question. How would he fare over this eight round distance, Samson? Having never done it, having been out the ring over nine years, he's had one back, but it was only a six rounder. Oh, that was a nice straight left. Took it well though, Hatton to his credit. Exchanging shots there. When he looks, when he lets them go, he looks really good. Like I was saying, but he just, he doesn't seem to to let them go enough. I think he's like I said, running out of gas. He's trying to hold on and buy seconds. But when Samson can let them go, he's looking really good. Another point here from the referee. Yeah, another point from the referee. Samson, not happy with that. But he's definitely feeling the pace, holding an awful lot. A good jab there from Samson. But it's been a, obviously it's been a good round after that point, but I thought it was a decent round anyway here for, for Campbell Hatton. Bit of afters there, barging each other at the end of that round, but signs that Hatton's starting to wear Samson down. How you feel? Yeah, and with that inability to hold well here, Samson, who's boxed really well, I'll be honest. And, and, he, and, 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 and he read his, he read, he read his, read his, luck, his luck as well with the holding, but now he can't do that, he's having to fight in, in places he doesn't want to. Well, first up on our main broadcast at 7pm, Khalil Majid takes on the local favourite hero, Tom Farrell. Brings experience into the contest, Farrell, but Majid looks calm, he looks relaxed. Ready to put on a good show. Harry Dan's wraps. That's first up at 7 pm, live on the zone. Back to this one, seventh round we go. Can Samson find some sort of second wind? Like Barry said he can no longer hold now. Two points off in this contest. Hatton, I feel, has sensed the movement slowing down. From Samson, though, Samson, however, has landed some nice shots with that left in particular and the lead right hook. But the younger man really starting to pile on the pressure. Good right hand there, though, from Samson. Just got to get lower here, Hatton. 
Holding again, Samson's got to be careful. Yeah, really well conditioned Hatton and, and walking forward throwing them shots. But like I've been saying throughout the fight, I'd just like to see him set them up a little bit better, coming coming through some faint, some head movement or something like that. But he's just uh, he's just walking forward in straight lines. Well, he sure decides what punch he's going to throw, and that's it, isn't it? He doesn't think of anything else, but I'm going to throw a left to the body, and that's what I'm going to do. He, he telegraphs it does. as well. On occasions, he will telegraph, trying to get close now to Samson and rough him up and work inside. But what he has shown happened was good engine, and he's been forcing the pace. He has felt sorry for himself when he's walked onto shots and dropped a few rounds here, hasn't he? There's still a tight fight, so he's kept going, kept trying to go. Just needs to work on a few of the fundamentals of closing the, the, the gap. Yeah, you talk about fundamentals there. He just walked onto another lead right hook, and it was just the recoil. He just didn't bring the jab back quick enough. That allowed Samson to, to find that shot over the top, so little defensive adjustments need to be made that's a nice jab see the difference when he relaxes he doesn't push the shot out and it's sharp it's a different jab altogether from Hatton central area champions Doncaster's James Flint could that be a fight we see for the winner perhaps after this, Samson again on the back foot. He's trying to let the shots go, but definitely the tank looking quite empty now. Definitely is feeling the pace. Looks a different fighter in this round from from the first couple of early rounds. Not as much movement, not as much output. Not much from either in this round, really. Some nice jabs though from Hatton. He's sharpened up. He's relaxed and loosened up those shoulders and the shots have come out quicker and the pressure with the front foot's different though because because well, samson's tired he's just allowing Hatton to walk closer to him yeah, he's closing that gap a little bit easier this time around Barry. yeah that's that's samson's that's not, there's not giving him anything to stop him is he to turn him it's missing with the left hand samson but head movement from Hatton we're going to see as he walks around that side and see that bit of swelling, bit of nick under that left eye. Yeah, pressure may be starting to tell here. It's just again early in the round there. Some of, some of the quality shown throughout the contest so far here, Samson. Fast reactions, that lovely right, long road hook that he's had. Which is, you know, that two perfect warnings for holding and just starting to tire now as Gary, Gary Point you know, sort of saw, the, saw those signs earlier in the contest to his credit. They look, they're, they're coming to fruition now, he's starting to get a little bit tired here, Samson, and the pressure of Hatton maybe just starting to tell. Three minutes work. But you know what it's like when you've got three minutes yourself. left, yeah. you get that adrenaline, but no, you can see the finishing line. So how he comes out in this round might be different here for Samson, he might have uh, more energy than, than, than he thinks. Yeah, let's see what both can come up with in this eighth and final round. As they touch gloves, how much is left in the tank? Well, he starts the round. But they both landed shots there. Samson with the left, Hatton with the right. Oh, nice left hook. Last round. He felt that Samson. Moved to go down there. He grabs hold at the right time there. A nice long left hook from Campbell Hatton. Got to be clever here now. Hatton, you no, know, he got all the momentum off. He walks onto a stupid shot coming forward. That gives Samson a bit of a lease of life. You've got to work smart. But keep yeah. that pressure on. And he's in trouble here, really, Samson, because he's hurt. Can't really move. He's not allowed to hold on anymore with a two points off. Landed a nice right hook, so it's going to have to be cute in there. Well, Hatton's got to, he's got to go to the body, Hatton, but then fire it over the top. So he's dipped nice and a little bit, you're going to drill one down the middle, and then come over with a long left hook. Like the shot up a little bit better, for sure, yeah. Does look as if Samson's recovered from that left hook. Moving, trying his best, holding on again. <laughs> trying to work the body, missing wildly with the right hook, Hatton, but still lots of pressure on that front foot. From the man from Hyde oh, but lovely left Samson. hand from Samson. Beautiful shot. Straight down the pipe. He's had that shot in his locker all night, doesn't he? He's bringing it out every now and again. Yeah, it's been the straight left and the lead right hook from Samson, and obviously the movement, but very 
evident early on in this contest it was going to be the pressure from Hatton to try and wear down the movement of Samson. They've obviously watched Samson. And he holds on. The referee's getting really annoyed him, really frustrated. He gives Samson a long, hard look. He didn't say nothing, just looked at him there and said, look, one more time, that's your luck. It's a mission of survival here now for Samson into the last minute of the round. Eight minutes ago. He's running almost on empty now, Samson. He's holding continuously here, though. Yeah, oh, he's called it off. Disqualified. Squ yeah, disqualified. Jamie Sampson. He did give him numerous warnings. Two points taken off. And he was off the contest, the referee. It's really disappointing for him as well because he was he boxed really well. Whether he was going to win the fight is irrelevant or not, but he boxed really well and he made it really it was a really hard, enjoyable fight. But he was holding from the offset, from the first round he was holding. But he was doing it right in front of the referee continuously. And by the way, I have to say, this three public warners and you chucked out is not a rule. It's in the discretion of the referee. The referee can actually give you as many public warnings as he feels fit. But it's usually that they warn you twice publicly and then they've had enough, their tolerance is enough. And well, that was the left hook, Barry. Sorry to jump in there. That was the left hook that stunned. And he, and he knew enough to hold, ironically. He knew enough to hold. Of course he did. But, I mean, he knew enough to survive. And, and it was a good shot. And he just took, it took the... You know, just took the momentum away from Hatton a little bit there that way and he boxed really well but you've got to give Hatton some credit here he's learning on the job these are the fights he needs to develop they're hard fights that he's going to get criticized for again unfortunately but these are the fights that are going to make him a better fighter fighters who have softball slick frustrate you hold you in all those all that contest but still you get the win ladies and gentlemen referee Martin Lyson disqualifies the red corner at two minutes and seven seconds of round number eight declaring your winner He's still undefeated, Campbell, the Hurricane Hatton. With some boos ring around the arena. Yeah, so frustrated. Something you don't hear that often, but for somebody who got disqualified for holding, I really enjoyed that fight. Um, you wouldn't really hear it with, usually you think that, that it's a boring fight if someone's after getting disqualified for holding, but I, I really enjoyed that fight. Um, I think it was entertaining the first few rounds. Samson came out to fight, came out to win, it looked like in the first few rounds, had lots of success, but obviously then that pressure of Hatton and the conditioning of, uh, of Samson, um, yeah, he came out on top. And you'd want to see it again. Let's be honest, you would do it, it was a good fight for him. It was a good, it was a good fight to watch, and you see that Hatton having to battle through things in his mind as well. And Samson as well, also thinking, I'm going to get the win, you. Yeah, look at that, wouldn't he, really, Samson, thinking... Well, at the oh, midway stage, boxing. it looked like yeah. he was going to win, let's be honest. Campbell Hatton is victorious after the disqualification. He's now sat down with Jamie Ward, our reporter and promoter, Eddie Hearn. Campbell Hatton, congratulations. 14 and 0, your second Southpaw in the books tonight. Just break that down for us, because it ended possibly not in the way you wanted it to, but just break that down, what we've just seen. No, it's not all what I wanted. I prepared well. Southpaw style isn't something that I struggle with. Been, been mixing it with some top south paws, Jack Cattrall being one of them. And it weren't as scrappy as that and it performed a lot better. So, it's, it's short. I don't think anyone's going to look good against that amount of holding. I think the ref did a good job. He gave him every opportunity and just apologised to everyone who's paid to come and watch that because that weren't entertaining anyone. You dealt with your first southpaw opponent a bit earlier this year in Manchester. Handily, you looked really good against him and got the stoppage. What made it frustrating in there amongst the holding as well? The holding, the... Phone in, he was hanging on for dear life. The, it was constant, he was getting constant warnings and he was doing nothing to stop it. So I think it shows that the ambition weren't there after a while because where, where could it have been? Did you feel that you were, you were breaking him down though? That was his first eight rounder tonight, Jamie Sampson, and it, it sort of seemed after the six round mark he really did just run out of ideas as well. Yeah, the first couple of rounds I, I thought. Uh, it was tricky using good feet. I thought he was still doing a fair bit of holding then, but it, it seemed to be a bit more tactical. Whereas after that, as he started tiring and as I started getting to him, it just seemed like survival tactics more than anything. Like you say, on, on paper, that was probably a step up for you tonight. Second southpaw, through the early rounds out of that southpaw stance, he did have a little bit of success. It's all learning for you, isn't it? And do you believe you'll learn a lot from that tonight as well? Yeah, it, it is all learning, but 
I think I'm going to get some stick after that performance now, and there was definitely things I could have done better, like, like with every fight, but I'm going, to, I'm going to get stick for that, and I don't think it was fully my fault. I was talking to Eddie a little bit earlier on in the stream, and he said it to you at the press conference as well this week, that 14 and 0 now. I want to ask you the question, not, not just Eddie Hearn. Where are you at in your mind, Campbell? What do you feel ready to look at next? Yeah, don't judge me off that performance at all. It weren't, uh, that weren't, that weren't like watching Campbell Atten that we know, not just in the gym, in the last few fights. The performances have been getting better and better, and that's followed suit in the gym. So I think that fight, for me, it was purely down to the opponent. I've got to watch it back, and I'm not going to put my hands up and say, don't blame me, don't blame me, but... Like, you can't judge me off that. I think I'm ready for them ten rounders and, the, uh, and a title of some sort. Well, let's grab a word with promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie Campbell said not the way he wanted to win the fight tonight. It was a bit scrappy at times and, and frustrating ultimately for Campbell in there this evening. Yeah, very difficult against an opponent that's not coming to fight, who's trying to survive, and I think the referee was spot on. I don't think it was a good performance from Campbell when he watches it back, but it's difficult to perform well against a guy that's just trying to spoil you and, and close down the space and hold. But you've got to deal with that, and he did deal with that, because after four rounds, it was quite a close fight when he watches it back, but he started to hurt him and wear him down. And, and there are some positives to take from it in a respect of you've got to deal with every type of opponent, but you've got to be better, because as you step up, if you perform it like that, you might get beat. So, but you've got to go back to the gym and realise he's putting the work in, and I think that against a different kind of style, he would have performed a lot better. But you have to face all kinds of different styles. You have to be versatile and you have to deal with whatever's in front of you. He got the win. He was going to win the fight on points anyway. I think he, he could have stopped him actually in the last round. He started to, to break him down and hurt him. But there's, there's still work to do. But you're running out of time to do that work. As you said, 14-0. and 0. I think against the right opponent who's coming to win, that's when you're going to see the best of him. And although he'll be frustrated tonight, those kind of experiences there, they do go a long way. It can't just all be you getting your own way, you improving, you getting pats on the back. There's got to be the criticism, there's got to be the tough nights, the frustrating nights, and he'll learn as much from that experience than he will of, of going in and bashing someone up over three or four rounds. So, good, go and salt, go and lick your wounds, and come back for a big fight early next year. Is that it for the year? Because I believe this was the, the fifth fight of a very it's active It's been very busy, round. and you know, sometimes activity's great, but also at the same time, you're always in the gym, you're not getting a lot of rest, and I'm not saying he's flat, because again, I, I put the pressure and the emphasis on the opponent tonight. But I think as you move into 10 rounds, you need to go back, like I said, wash it back, lick your wounds, come back, do a proper camp, and I think 10 rounds is next. Some kind of area title fight against someone that's coming to win. That's when you're going to see the best of Campbell Hatton. But good, as I said, you know, go away. He'll be disappointed with his performance. He'll be disappointed with the fight. That's okay. Now we're going to see the tougher test, and I think that's when you're going to see him perform better. I think he's still going to surprise a lot of people. And off the back of that, it's going to be easy to match him because everyone's going to say, I can beat Campbell Hatton. Jamie Sampson did, but let's be honest, after four rounds, he didn't really fancy it, did he? So we'll see if those boys fancy it against Campbell Hatton. As I said, I think he'll surprise people. Eddie, if you could just pass the, the mic there down the line. Substitution, in comes uh, uncle and trainer Matthew Hatton. Matthew, what was your verdict as trainer watching that from ringside tonight? Well, I did ex express some concern previously about the opponent. I watched his last fight. He, he was holding, he had points taken off for holding. I actually asked the referees, the first time I've ever done it, to watch for the holding. I was hoping this big crowd, a big night, would make him come and fight a little bit more. And it takes two to tango. Campbell could perform better, probably should perform better. But, wow, that was so difficult against a frustrating opponent. I thought he was very, very lucky to get through to the eighth round. I thought there was a case for him being disqualified earlier because he didn't want to know. Big crowd, big night. And... Um, Disappointing, disappointing, in term, frustrating. In terms of next steps, Matthew, obviously he looked fit in there tonight. That's one thing we can certainly take away from it, was throwing big shots right until the end in his second eight rounder. Do you follow suit with, with Eddie that it is the time now to, to look at these 10 rounders and title fights? Because that's what Campbell wants as well. I think so. You know, we didn't get a true reflection of Campbell tonight. You know, um, the opponent didn't come to fight. He was constantly holding, constantly falling. And like Eddie said, it's going to be easy to match Campbell now. Um, he's capable of a lot more and, um, you know, we get an opponent who comes to fight and we see the best of Campbell. Final one from you tonight, Campbell. I know, as you just said there, you'll go and watch that back, get back in the gym for a busy, active 2024 and come and continue to prove a point because I always feel that's going to be the case and, and that's important to you as well. Yeah, we can see him getting better. It's been, it, it's been a pattern for the last 
not as much my first year as a professional, but definitely the last, like, like the second half of my career, where every fight's been a little bit better, and this one's not followed suit. And again, you learn more from them fights where things aren't going to plan than the ones that do. So just uh, roll on next year. Roll on next year, indeed. Professional victory number 14, Campbell Hatton. Well done. Well, Campbell Hatton moves to 14 and 0 as a professional. And remember, the big fights keep coming here on the zone. Oh, sorry about that. Bit of an issue with our VT there, but some big fights coming. Take my word from it, there really is. And one man who is on one of those big shows, Taylor Cameron, the rematch, is Gary Cully. I know you've mentioned already, but camp going well. Excited to get back in there? Yeah, I'm in, uh, based in Liverpool now, obviously. Um, it kind of humbled me in a way. I'm back over in Liverpool. I'm, I'm, I haven't got the comforts of getting up and getting into my car and turning on the heating in the cold mornings anymore. I'm cycling to the gym. Um, back what I used to do when I was 14, 15 years old, going to the amateur boxing club when I was hungry back then. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back in. Um, obviously, I feel like I'm blessed in a way that I get to go back to Dublin. After losing there, I get to go straight back to Dublin. Um, big fight co-main event and make it right but this could be this fight could be in my local boxing gym or in the Thunder Boxing Club I don't care where it is it's just for me to get back to winning ways get back to where I need to be and uh, put on a performance and show every, everybody that last time it was a blip and was it hard to get over that last fight I know you was bitterly frustrated and annoyed with yourself but how are you now mentally yeah like i'm a winner i'm a winner in everything i do in in if we go out on a on a run in the gym or for we're in the gym lifting weights whatever we're doing i'm a winner in life and uh, I, I believe i just i belong in the winners club um obviously i'm not in there anymore i'm coming off the first loss of, the, of my career so it was hard to deal with, it was hard to take but i've got a good support system around me um a good team lots of good friends and people giving me good advice. So um, yeah, I, I've dealt with it, I've learned from it. I believe everything happens for a reason. I believe I've learned my lessons and uh, I'm ready to make it right on November 25th. Well, we wish you all the very best, Gary. Let's have a look at what we've seen already on Before the Belt. Well, it started off in fine form. William Crawler defeating Martin Shaw in that first round, blistering start. And followed up by Muhammad Ali, looking very good, very composed. Showed us glimpses of brilliance against Comerso from Italy. Then again, Paddy Lacey, following exactly what Crawler done, landing a lovely shot to Owen Kirk's body, and that was it, KO in the first round. And we've just seen there the frustrating victory, the disqualification for Campbell Hatton against Jamie Sampson, who was doing well in the fight, but ran out of gas and ran out of ideas and held on and Campbell Hatton, like we said, goes on to 14-0 as a professional. And this is what we have for you in around 10 minutes, just over 10 minutes time. Obviously, uh, Masood has had to withdraw through illness, so we start the evening with Khalil Majid versus local man Tom Farrell. Commonwealth Super Featherweight title against Fiaz and Reese Belotti. What a fight that promises to be. Then the hard hitting wrecking ball, Jack Turner versus Adam Yahaya. And then the local future superstar, yes, I'm saying it, I don't care, he's that good. Pete McGraw in with Fran Mendoza. And that sets up nicely for tonight's main event. Jack Cattrall. And I have to keep saying this because he is. A boxing legend in Jorge Linares. Been to these shores before. He's upset the local favourites. Can he do it again in the twilight years of his career? What's a main event that promises to be? A pot of gold for the winner. Well, from me, Barry and Gary, we hope you've enjoyed our commentary and what you've just witnessed. Remember, tune in 7pm for that main card. So from us, goodbye and have a good evening. I believe I can go on and win world titles and uh, 
and make a good name for myself. If I don't believe in myself, then I can't expect my coaches, my family, the fans, anyone else to believe in myself. And I've got the right team now. Uh, boxing coaches, strength coaches, nutritionists. I'm doing everything that I can possibly do to put me in the greatest position, to get them world titles, get them big fights. I truly believe he's the best one fight fighter in the world. I don't think he's that much of a secret anymore because he's coming out part. It was the Josh Taylor fight. Everyone understands how good he can be, but I really don't believe we've seen the best of him yet.